Good evening. I am Pete, also known as Risk for Awards. And tonight we are bringing you a Cheltenham Festival preview. And it is going to be taken over care by none other than our one and only Racing Lee. So take it over, Lee. Yes, everybody, welcome uh, to the preview, Nate. Of course, in association with Star Sports, we've got Flynn from Star Sports, who's going to be giving us offers uh, throughout the night. And we've got the top lads there. Uh, Pete, of course, we're on his channel, uh, Ginger Joe and Racing Gav as well. There's plenty to get through, lads. Uh, I'm going to head to Flynn straight away because Flynn has got a sign-up offer from Star Sports. Uh, so anybody listening in, you can get a good uh, sign-up offer here. Flynn, what's the offer? Uh, thanks, Lee. Uh, so we've got sign up offer, which is promo code preview25. Uh, so when you go to the sign up page, just type that preview25 into the promo code section. Uh, and it's bet up to £25 on any uh, Cheltenham race or market um, and get a matching free bet to that state. So um, yeah, head on there. Uh, we, we don't usually do sign up offers here at Stars. This is a bit different for us. So especially for this preview, we're doing one. Uh, and there'll be plenty of boosts throughout the night. Um, we'll do uh, a single for each day, uh, and then we've also got boosted treble. I'm not sure if we want to spin through that now, the boosted treble, uh, but those boosts will be on the site as well. If you head to the horse racing section and, and then to the special section, uh, all the boosts are there. Uh, the boosted treble is in for 25 quid, and the singles are in for 50 quid. So um, have a look at those. Um, I can detail them throughout the night. Um, or I can even spin through, through the treble now, Lee, if you want, quickly. I think we should get through the treble so people can get on as early as they can. So it's a limited time only. If you want to get on, get on straight away. So there's a boosted treble. What is it, Flynn? So the boosted treble, this was voted for by uh, Pete's followers. So he stuck a poll up uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, I think you had about 700 votes in the end, uh, Pete. Yeah. And the winner was Lossy Mouth for the Mayors, El Fabiolo for the Champion Chase. And Gallop and the Champ for the Gold Cup. Uh, we Three boosted winners. this to five to one. Uh, so pretty decent boost. If you still aim to watch checker, the best price out there is 3.59 to one when I last checked. Uh, that was with Skybet. Uh, so we've gone five to one. That's for a max stake of 25 quid. Uh, so that's a nice little favourite treble to get you uh, started off. Um, if you wanted to do the sign up offer, you can stick your 25 quid on that and then you'll still get a 25 pound free bet. Uh, we've also got non runner, no bet for that treble. So if one of the horses is a non runner, uh, then you will get, uh, uh, then the, uh, the, the bet will be void, so you'll get your money back. Um, so check that out. That's on the specials page under the horse racing section of the site or the app. Yeah, that's a great travel, I think. It's uh, th them are my three winners, anyways. Um, lads will roll on. Uh, Pete, I'll come to you first. So, um, how's the excitement building? We've only got a, a week on Tuesday there for the festival. Um, the Raw kicks things off for the Supreme. What do you fancy in the Supreme? The excitement's too much, Lee. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, It takes too long, this bit. I love the start. Everyone gets all excited. We all get the weights, and then it's like a really long wait, waiting for that first week, and then obviously you've still got a week to go. Um, <clears throat> regards Supreme, uh, just a few quick short stats. Hendo and Mullins won eight out of the last 11 of them. Um, oh. The last every the last th Out of their last 13 horses, 12 out of the last 13 have all come here unbeaten. Oh, uh, sorry, not unbeaten, have come here having won last time out. And six yeah. of the six of, of the last winners were all um, single-figure prices. So as much as obviously we all want to go there and be like, oh, let's go win a, a decent whack, it seems like it's a pretty locked-down market, especially as obviously Mullins runs two or three of his best there. For me, it's pretty simple. I, I went through this race in quite a lot of depth just to try and do stuff for the blog. And the more I went through it, obviously I was trying to get away from Ballyburn, but the more it just went around in a big circle. And I don't really want to work waste too many people just to put things in really really simple context i really like jericho de repine i think this race will be perfectly suited him same applies to firefox mm -hmm. but jericho de repine his form low 130 rprs even beating fiercely proud and lump sum their form low 130s and then you look at what ballyburn did 158 rpr last time out like that's supreme level already he only needs a few more pounds and then you go you go through below he was doing that beating other horses that were not five they're not far like slade steel just under a 150 performance so it's chalk and cheese and i know you say well you can only beat what's put in front of you but they both had a similar start they both had three starts each over hurdle so i don't want to bore everyone but i think if ballyburn runs here he wins yeah uh, flynn i'm going to come to you um what price has ballyburn for the supreme and uh, if you just run through the 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 few in the market leaders there uh, for the supreme 
Yeah, so we're anti-post rules apply in a lot of the races by the championship ones, just quickly. Uh, reason being that we kind of believe in that old school type of betting where if you have an opinion to take a chance, you can take a bigger price. Um, in this race, is anti-post rules apply. Um, Valley Burnage, your five to six favourite. Tully Hill is nine to two. Firefox, six to one. Mystical Power, 13 to two. And then your eight to one, uh, Jericho Repine and nine to one Buck. Have you seen any big uh, bets on Valley Burn so far for the Supreme or will they be close at the day? Uh, the real big bets will be closer to the day purely because the appetite for laying those type of bets is, is closer to the day. But we have laid Ballyburn at fairly juicy prices. I think we've laid it at six, uh, and then we also laid it at twos. Um, so some nice tickets there. <clears throat> That's always balanced out by the, the uh, not so nice ones, as you know. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's a fairly short price of five to six, but I think we, we may be joint industry best at five to six uh, about uh, Ballyburn. Yeah, plenty of money for Ballyburn. Is he your winner, Joe? He is, Lee. Yeah, I mean, it's not very obviously original, but um, I mean, he definitely runs here to to make the first point. It'd be, it could actually turn out to be a massive mistake if he ends up going to uh, the Ballymore or the bar in Bingham, uh, shall we say? Because if he ends up running in the bar in Bingham and then Willie doesn't manage to take the Supreme, then there's suddenly a little bit of pressure on there for him for uh, for day two. But he's going to run, uh, run here, and I think he's probably going to be the most likely winner too. Similar to Pete, um, I think Jericho de Repine is a little bit underestimated. He's three from three. He hasn't necessarily looked flashy, but like Pete said, Lumpson did go on and win the Dove Cut at Kempton. And that's actually some pretty strong form because when Jericho beat them the time before, he was hanging left, but he was looking right. He didn't have a clue what his job was, and he still found the gears to get uh, the turn of foot and get the job done. Um, I suppose the concern with him is that usually by now with Nicky Henderson runners, we've seen a little bit of bit more maturity. Um, so I just wonder if Cheltenham possibly comes too soon, but I still think that he is definitely the underestimated sort because he does remind me of a binocular or a booba there. He's a pretty slick, sort of flashy type. He's yeah. just got to realise what his job is, Lee. So I think Ballyburn is the one to beat. I've been trying to get him beat, but that's probably going to be a mistake. I think he takes all the beating in the opener. Yeah, is it a mistake, uh, Gav, to be taken on the legs of Ballyburn, or do you think Jericho de Repine has got a chance? I know the form of uh, Nicky Henderson's have been questioned this week. Um, do you think he's got a live each way play? Uh, he's got an each way play, but I can't see it much more than a running into a second or third, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think Pete's knocked it on the, the head, really, where he's effectively said the more you look into it, the more you just keep circling back around to Ballyburn. Um, he's pretty impossible to get away from. And the fact that he's at levels already that are kind of clear of the field, it's almost scary if he could find more gears, knowing that kind of Willie's going to be targeting Cheltenham as his ultimate aim. Um, and it just, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it was like a 2021, appreciate it, real kind of romps in by multiple lengths, even sort of yeah. 10, 20 lengths. Um, it looks like it could be that sort of year. So I am quite reluctant to, to kind of take him on. Um, away from him, the only one that would potentially interest me, um, and it's a huge caveat of I'd want it to be decent ground, um, and that's Tadda the name. I think is about 20 yeah, to 1 a minute for Ben Paulin. Um, so it's a point-to-point -point winner, so it's got that kind of stamina there, and you always need that for the, the Supreme, I think. Um, two runs on good ground or good to soft ground have been absolute routes by sort of 14 lengths. So it's always hard to get kind of a handle on what that's worth, really. Um, the other two times where he's been beaten has been on softer ground. Um, and yeah, Ben Paulin has made it pretty clear that he thinks that the world of him. Um, they bypass the Betfair because of the bad ground to come straight here. Um, and as we've seen recently, Ben Paul is in red hot form. He can get them ready at home. Um, and yeah, if it was decent ground, I'd give him a, a good squeak at, at 20 to 1. Yeah, great shout. I think it's unanimous against Valley Burn there, but um, good each way play there um, from Gav. Uh, Flynn, I'll come to you. Is Marine National, he's, is, he's still clear uh, market leader for the Oracle. I know Joe's a big fan of him. What's the prices for the Oracle there? Yeah, so Marine National is 94. <laughs> Ilete Tom is 92. Founder 50 is 5 to 1, Gaelic Warrior 13 to 2, Hunter Jean 15 to 2, and 9 to 1 bar. Um, if I should put a quick word in for Hunter Jean, I just think he's a very unexposed horse and in, in a race that looks like it's um, fairly open with the performance of Marine National. And when you've got those few towards the top of the market that all have that linking form from the DRF last time out, um, kind of pays to take a chance on one. And Willie's been very, very complimentary about Hunter Jean recently. So um, I wouldn't be against him at all. Yeah, there's there's plenty of each way uh, players. I think, this. but Joe, I'll come to you first. You, you lead the fan club for Marine National. You're on him for the Supreme. Are you sticking with him uh, for the Oracle? Absolutely, loyalty is key, Lee. And why not just back the best horse in the race? I mean, 
he obviously has a few little quirks on soft ground um, and people will start obviously looking into the fact that he's wearing a tongue tie, had a wind operation, etc. But the fact is the majority of recent Arkell winners, perhaps in the last 10 years, have all had wind operations as well. Now, I suppose the argument there is that he bombed out a little bit at the DRF, but um, Barry put that down to ground. And I think that's a fair assessment because Mikey, I interviewed Mikey the other day. He was he wasn't very happy with Marine, even at the start. He was a little bit of a drifter at the beginning as well. He didn't totally look himself in the parade ring. And you could actually see that early on in the day. Now, people will say, obviously, he's gone on and won grade ones on uh, deep ground over hurdles. Yes, things get slightly over-exaggerated when we get over fences, but he was arrow straight on his beginner's chase debut. He only needed to be squeezed to extend as well, and he's by far got the quickest turn of foot in this field. So for me, I'm more than happy to put a line through his last run. I also think it's almost a bit of a discredit to Barry Connell, where people are saying this lad's got a wind issue. He wouldn't run him if he had a wind issue. They've done clinical tests. They've had a look at x-rays. Everything seems fine. He is an animal, but I'll tell you what, Lee, he's a very fast animal, and he's not going to get beat at Cheltenham. I didn't expect nothing less from you, Joe, to be fair. <laughs> I did see Barry Connell um, mention about head carriage and stuff like that. It, it, he's always had that head carriage, and uh, I seen him interviewed the other day. So I don't think it's uh, too much to worry about. We can always forgive a horse one run. Pete, are you willing to forgive Marine National or you fancy anything else? A bit of both. I, I like Flynn's shout on Hunter's Yarn. I, someone sent me that earlier this week, and I just laughed at him, and I was like, that's, that's a handicapper, mate. And then I went, I went through the race and I was looking through and I was thinking, Jesus, I was like, what are you going to find to back in this race? And I do think of, of, the, of what is in this race, I do think Hunter's Yarn is an interesting one. Um, but I'm this, Joe summed it up, but I'm, I've got a different perspective in the fact that I think it's basically Marine National or nothing for me. Like, I mean, the only negative, or there are many negatives, obviously, after last run, but a strong negative is the fact that 10 of the last winners have all come here having won their last start, which he obviously didn't. But I, I don't know what happened. I don't think Barry knows what happens. I don't think anyone really knows what happened. But horses have off days. Like, they, they all do it. And I just think whether you've backed him anti-post six months ago or you, you, you were thinking you're going to back him on the day or whatever, like, I'd just rather be with him or nothing at all because I looked through the rest and they are a very much a much of a muchness. Like, founder 50, Ilite Tomps, I fell for that trap last year. And I just think he's better. He's better. At the, he's better round the DRF track. And I just think no. So simple for me. It's either Marine National. You're either with him or you just watch the race. Yeah, Gav. I'll come to you. Uh, Marine National banker or bust for you? Yeah, I, I'm leaning more towards banker. Um, I have to admit, I am fully with Joe on this one. Um, so yeah, it's one of those that it is going back to what Pete said that they're animals. They have off days. He's had yeah. one off day. More than willing to forgive that. Um, and the thing that I think is quite crucial on the ground as well is that it was properly worked through ground, wasn't it, the DRF, which is a, a different type of soft to your kind of your fresh soft that he's going to be getting in the Arkle. Um, so, yeah, if, if this was on like where it's kind of where the mayor's chase would be on the Friday, I would be worried. But the fact that it's the freshest ground any chase is going to get in that Arkle race, um, yeah, that that's a huge positive for, for me. Um, and, yeah, I'll be willing to, to forgive it. Um, to be honest, it's one of those that I'm kind of already on him. So I'm in that kind of middle ground where, I wouldn't go in again because of that worry. But at the same time, I'm not running to kind of cash out bets or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just sticking where I am. And he's the, the main <laughs> one for me. Um, I think Pete kind of touched on Ilite Tomp there. So um, I mentioned him before the DRF at about sort of 20 to 1, just saying he shouldn't have been that price compared to Fasal Vega and Founder 50. Um, whereas here, he isn't that kind of juicy price. He's more like a, a 5 to 1 or whatever he is, which kind of puts me off because it's just a, a fair price rather than a good one. Um, the only horse that would interest me if he did turn up here, and they've kind of um denied about it, it was my mate Mozzie. Uh, so he's either going to go here or into the, the Grand Annual. Um, and he'd be quite a juicy price here. And it could just be one that sets up for a closer. Um, and I think he would enjoy it. And I think he'd have the class and the pace to go with them. Um, but yeah, whether he rocked up here, I'd have a small each way bet. And I'd be a lot more interested if he rocked up in the in the handicaps. Um, but he's won at a big price. And, and like Pete said, it's a, a much a much less race behind Marine National. Yeah, fair play. Um, we've seen plenty of market move Um in the champion hurdle, Flynn, of course, um, was in news from Constitution Hill. Um, the, the gallop the other day didn't go so well. Uh, what's the market looking like at the minute? Yeah, so this, so this market's a bit of a mess, really. Um, State Man is two on, uh, Constitution Hill was four to five, Lossy Mouth four to one, Irish Point five to one, <clears throat> uh, and then your 14 bar, and then you're into your, uh, to your not so sleepy Zarek the Brave. So it's a bit of a mess of a race. and. 
Um, it's one that I have zero opinion on, and I just hope whatever the favourite is when it turns up gets beaten. <laughs> yeah, fair play. That's it. That's a star sport there. Um, hopefully, <laughs> wanting to take on one of them at least. Um, lads, I'll keep it quite simple for this one. So, if Constitution Hill turns up, will he win still? And if not, is it state man? So, just a yes or no kind of thing. Uh, people, start with you. I think if Constitution Hill isn't in the race, state man wins, regardless of Irish point switches or anything else. If Constitution Hill is in the race, which I don't think he will be, I think it's a done deal. I think he will. I think Nicky's been very honest, and of all, he is. He thinks every single horse, regardless of their caliber, is is his pet, and I don't think he'll run him unless he knows he's 125 percent. Um, and so, but if he does run, I don't know. I just have to sit and wait and see the vibes. But I, I think it'll be. I think State Man will be the one in the winners' enclosure because I think he'll be the only one running. Fair play, uh, Joe. Yeah, I mean, if he's not going to send him over to Ireland to race, he's definitely not going to be lining up in the champion hurdle when he's not 100% fit. That's what how I see it lead, to be honest. And I think he's probably doing the right thing. Um, as fans, of course, we'd love to see him turn up, but it's not fair on Constitution Hill to send him there if he's not fit. It's not the right thing to do. But the flip side of things is um, State Man may well be the deserved champion hurdle winner. He's had a full campaign. He's improved. He's beat everything. He's done no. He's done nothing wrong. Everything that's been put in front of him, he's absolutely taken it all in a stride. He might have even improved a couple of pounds. But Constitution Hill, I can't see him turning up. I'd be concerned if he did turn up as well, no, uh, to be honest, Lee. But um, I think State Man will be the deserved winner of the champion hurdle. Yeah, fair. And uh, Gav, for you, is it a case of... Uh, State man just wins if Constitution Hill doesn't turn up, or do you think Constitution Hill can still win it even after this interrupted prep? Yeah, to be honest, for me, it's it's very simple. There's just one bet for me that would be remotely of interest, and that is just Constitution Hill, non runner, no bet. Um, if he turns up, I think he'll only turn up if he's 100%, and if he does, he yeah, wins. Right. And if he doesn't, you get your money back. So for me, that's a bit of a no brainer. Um, and I've seen a couple of mention it where you could almost use it as a bit of a leverage on other bets of stick him in there. And then again, if he runs, he wins. And he's a bit of leverage to get a bigger price. If he doesn't run, he just got the single going anyway. Um, but yeah, for me, if he turns up, he wins. If he doesn't, State Man wins. Yeah, look, uh, I'll be totally honest. I had a, a good bet on Constitution Hill, none run and all bet with Lossy Mouth, uh, which will transition into as well. Uh, Flynn, she's now a warm order after bolting up at Cheltenham the last day. Uh, what's the prices for the mayor's early? Uh, so Lossy Mouth is one to two, Ashro Diamond seven to two, Echoes in Rain twelves, Love and uh, Love and Boy twelves, <clears throat> Marie Fox twelve, and then your fourteen bar. Um, look, this is the real hot pot of the week. I think um, I think we'll be struggling whether it be standing on the pitch, uh, myself and Ben will be there across the two pitches, or whether it be the online side of the business. I think that this is going to be the one. Uh, which is going to be really, really difficult to beat. Uh, one I just wanted to mention very quickly, a bigger price is Echoes in Rain. Um, so it's peculiar having a horse kind of step in, uh, uh, drop him in class for a Cheltenham Festival race, but kind of drop him in class to the Mayor's race as opposed to running in an open company. Um, and if you compare Echoes in Rain's recent runs in terms of RPRs compared to some of the others, um, very, very competitive with Ashro Diamond, Love Envoy, Marie's Rock, etc. cetera. Um, so I thought that a 12 to 1, she, she can run into a place that, you're almost hoping for uh, a bit of a blip from Lossy. <clears throat> yeah, she still does have the chance to go into that champion hurdle, I think. Um, but, yeah, she's got a huge chance in this mayor's hurdle. It's open um, behind the market leader there, Lossy Mouth. Joe, I'll come to you. What about Lossy Mouth? Is she home and host? I mean, I've, I've been trying to get her beat all season long, to be honest, Lee. I've been flying the flag for Astro Diamond, of course. She's got that Marine National form. And I just think she's she's the one that's proven over this trip. She skipped Cheltenham last year with a minor setback. It was nothing, nothing bad at all. She ended up going to Fairy House and she absolutely hosed up over two mile four. She was against some decent horses that day as well. And for me, she definitely sets the bar or the standard over this trip at this sort of time. The question mark with Lossie is, will she handle the two and a half mile trip? The closer we get, the more I'm thinking, yes, she probably will. And I think that basis means she'll probably actually outclass Astro Diamond as well because she's the one with more speed. And the way she powered up the hill um, at Cheltenham last about, there's no reason to think that she's not going to handle the undulations again. I just think she's pretty much a banker at the moment. And even though, again, I love Astro Diamond being a walk in the park mayor, I'm a big fan of walk in the parks. Lossie Marth just looks pretty special. She's got a wicked turn of foot. And it's great to see those Richie colours as well storming up the hill, to be honest. So Lossy Mouth um, is a late change to my selection for the Mayor's League. 
fair dues. Um, Pete, could she be another honeysuckle? Could she take this mare's hurdle en route to a champion hurdle, you reckon, Lossy Mouth? I thought she looked more Annie Power than Honeysuckle. Like, I was there that day when she won on the uh, trials day, and that was just next <clears> level. <throat> I thought the money the money really came for her, and I thought, OK, yeah, I can, obviously you can see it. I mean, it was a mad price move when she went from around even money, and then next thing she was like 8 to 11, just because of the they'd got the weights wrong. I think it's a, it was something like a, a three-pound swing she got, and then suddenly she was like four to seven and getting shorter and shorter. Um, but that it was just, that was like eye-popping eye good. Um, the two mile four is a concern. Like I had, I had a little look through, and thirteen of the last fourteen winners um, have all they were all proven at two mile four or further. And obviously she isn't. But at the same time, like you listen to the vibes. Like I listened to something the other day, and I watched David Casey talking about it, obviously from Willie Mullins Yard, and the way they talk about her, like they say, like you just get that sort of special vibe. And I was concerned with the whole triumph form, the same as Joe. Me and Joe discussed this at the start of the season. I was confirmed because they, they, they do struggle and Willie is trying. He's got so many triumph winners, but they struggle to make that gap. But giving her that extra three, four months, like she, she seems next level. But at the same time, I am excited for the clash of Astro Diamond because she's obviously, she was really impressive and it'll be interesting to see what she comes off the bridle. The way they talk at home, it's like there's there's so much between them, but... We'll, we'll see on the track, but I do think the front two are well clear, in my opinion, and I do think it'll be lost enough. I'll be looking for Flynn to go and stand near him for this for this race. Now, now I know he's going to be nervous at the pitch. I'll be like, "So, how's it going? What's the liabilities?" <laughs> so, so um, yeah, no, uh, loss him mouth all the way for me. Can, can I can I just add something there as well, Lee? Just to make a point as well to what um, what Pete was just saying, we. I often I fancied Ashro Diamond because she's a couple of years older than Lossy Mouth. I I quite big on the fact that these mares need a little bit more time to develop and fill their frame which is partly why I fancied Astro Diamond but I think Mullins has been really smart this year and given her until after Christmas and we were all sort of concerned that we hadn't seen her but I think now again what we've seen at Cheltenham proves that she is much bigger and stronger now and that is again what's made me switch switch I think I think he's been very very good with his mares he's, he's campaigned them so so well yeah, correct. I think that 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 to bridge that gap from a five-year-old, I think it's it's hard to kind of get lost at sea. But to give her that extra month, I think he's played his hand well there. Um, lads, I'll come round the room. So anything else from day one? We've got plenty of handicaps there. Um, there's the national hunt chase. Um, I'll start with you, Pete. We'll work our way around. Anything else from day one that you fancy? Did Did you ask Gav about his mess? He doesn't care, Pete. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Gavs, Gavs, I presumed Gavs, Gav was on. Um, as much as Gav, Gav was no, on last <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, like, yeah, time. I wasn't going to make a scene, but yeah, you just. <laughs> <laughs> you should have, Gav. You should have. That's yeah. it. I'm He's off. been making a scene for the last six months about it not being lossy mouth. Yeah, right. on, exactly. <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah, on, so Gav, take it away. So for me, yeah. I have to admit, like me and Pete spoke at the start of the season on, on his channel, um, and I was very, very keen to take on Lossy Mouth. Uh, I have to admit, my bottle's slightly gone uh, after watching her on, on Trials Day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those for me that I think the, the lads have hit the nail on the head in terms of the pros for her, that they took that a little bit longer. Um, it's paying dividends, evidently, looking at, at Trials, Trials Day. Um, the one thing that would concern me is the fact that, to me, both between what I'm seeing visually and the way they're talking about her as a sort of next year's champion hurdle horse, I just think she's an out-and-out out two-miler. And it might be that she's classy enough to get away with it. Um, but if a lot of rain came and it went proper soft, I would worry. Um, because, yeah, I think she's got to prove she can settle over that pay, over that trip. She's got to prove she can get up the hill over two-mile four. There's a lot of question marks for horses, like four to seven. Um, so, yeah, as it is, if it was, say, like, good to soft ground, I would probably just leave her leave it alone. Um, if it went softer, I'd be half tempted to try and lay her if she was heavily odds on, like a four to seven or something like that. Um, and the one for me as well, if it was properly soft, is Levin Boy at, at 16 to one. Um, so obviously there's been a few things come out recently that she's harder to train with her joints and stuff at the minute and they're looking to sort of sell her after Cheltenham. But it's that kind of one last dance scenario that we had with Honeysuckle. And yeah, I'd love to see it, it kind of work twice in a row where they've had that sort of perfect send off. Um, and at 16 to one, if it was proper soft and testing, I would, I would back her um, and I'd look to probably lay Lossy Mouth. But on the sort of good to soft ground, um, she she looks special, doesn't she? Yeah, she does look special. Um, obviously, Gallimar saw she's kind of bombed out a bit this season and it's kind of left the door open for her. Gav, I'll stick with you then. So, um, any handicap fancies for day one or anything in the National Hunt Chase? 
Um, so for the national hunt chase, and it's kind of over the last day or so, it seems to be going that way, um, is that it looks like Broadway boys go into the national hunt chase now, doesn't it? Looking yeah. at the exchange prices. Um, and to be honest, I'd be extremely interested in him there. So I quite fancied him, um, particularly earlier in the season for the, the Brown Advisory. Um, and I just think he's a he's a monster. He's a big horse. He'll gallop all day. Um, and I think he'd absolutely love that national hunt chase. Uh, I think he's about sort of 12 to 1, I think it was when I looked. Um, and he'd be a serious each way bet for me um if if he if he does go there and that's the the plan um i do worry if he did go down a brown advisory route he's probably going to find the the top couple in the market a bit classy for him um so yeah it's probably the the right play um in terms of elsewhere um the goffer was was interesting for the ultimate but the price has been absolutely hammered yeah. now so i don't really any value in that um if i know the way you're thinking went to, for the ultimate i think he's about 14 to 1 and um, he would interest me more there than top weight in the kim year um, and the other one for the ultimate is Trelawne. I think he's about 16 to 1. Um, and I think he's been crying out for a step up in trip to three miles. Um, and I think it would just bring out more of him. He's kind of very unexposed in, in that regard. Um, and I think everybody's kind of drawn to Chianti Casco for, for Bailey. But I think Trelawne could actually be the, the one for him in that. Um, and then the only other kind of handicap on the, the first day was the Boodles, isn't it? Um, Milan's Tino, the, the 10 pound weight drop is a huge eye catcher. Um, but and if it come up soft, that would be an each way bet for me. Uh, but it's not really a race that I like to get involved in, to be honest. Yeah, ten pounds drop for Milantino. Um, plenty of chances in that Boodles. Joe, what about you? Any handicap fancies for you, or anything in that National Hunt Chase? I'm not uh, nothing standing out in the National Hunt Chase to me as of yet, uh, Lee. But I do like one in the Boodles at sixteen to one. You might be able to get a bit of twenties about Cossack Char for. Yeah. Joseph O'Brien. Now, he, he's actually a really nice horse. He ran a massive race at Down Royal. He finished second to Wadu by a neck, but he floored about three or four fences and just galloped all day. He only just got done that day on the line. Next time out, he then went around at Leperstown in the same race as Car Jace, uh, Carla Conti, Ner Bernrig, and he went from the front. He actually ran a really good race that day, but what I liked was the fact that he jumped so much better that day, and I think he's actually going to improve from that again. So he's off a mark of 130. He's improving nicely. He does all the best work late on in the race, which I think you probably need in a boodle, certainly these days anyway, and I think he's actually one that's still on the up. I think he's probably been nicely campaigned for this race, Lee, and after those three runs, I'm expecting a big performance from him this time. There's plenty at the top with Nice, uh, nice credentials, but that run last time out where he finished sixth behind Carla Conti was a massive eye catcher to me. And I think you've got to take a piece of that because I think on the day he is going to be the big price horse that gets latched onto and will go off single figures. So Cossack Char, quite sweet on him as well. I must say, uh, must say, Lee. Yeah, look, I, I, I like the chance of him. Um, the top of the market there in the Budos, Lock in the morning, being really well backed, but he probably does one bit better ground. Pete, can you find anything against uh, Lock in the morning or any other handicap fancies on day one? The Boodles is just the worst race of the festival, in my opinion. I just like, like you look at the way they're campaigned, the, what they're doing, like everyone's praising, obviously, we're well, not praising, but the favourite has literally had the strangest campaign. And if he wins, everyone will be like, oh, that's what we need to do every year. And I just don't get it. Um, I have got, obviously, a stat that's well known by quite a lot of the racing fans, but maybe not so much people who don't follow too much. Like There's a, there's a hurdle at Nace in February, and that's produced four of the last five winners. Three winners, you had Brazil, Band of Outlaws and Aramax all won the race and then all won here. And then last year, Jazzy Matty and Biker both finished second and third and they finished first, I think, first and second or first yeah. and third. Um, in and, and last year, everyone was like, well, that form looks absolute dross. And they latched on to all these sexy looking horses, the lark in the mornings. They forgot about those and they both went off like something like 20 to 1 and 33s or whatever. And they finished 1-2. So from that race, I did end up back in Nara um she has been a bit she's had a bit of money recently after the race i thought okay i'm not too sure she traveled really well jumped well but coming in i thought she she didn't she lacked effort but that's the summary of the boodles they they all seem to lack effort um so the boodles not really uh the ultima it makes me laugh every year i look at it now meeting of the waters and the goffer 11 to 2 and 8 to 1 favorites the irish zero for 17 last 17 years Every year, everyone backs the Irish horses. Every year, they're like, oh, that's another non-winning year for the Irish. Um, and then also another pointer for the ultimate. Every year, people trip over themselves trying so hard to try and solve such a tricky puzzle so early on. And if you look, look at the first three last year. They were all, they were pretty much joint favourites. The finish one, two, three is joint favourites. And if you look through the last 10 years, nine out of the 10 have all gone off 12 to one or shorter. So, I mean, you may as well wait until close to the decks. Let let the field sort itself <coughs> out. 
and and then go from there. And then finally, the national hunt chase. I um I I don't like Corbett's cross, and I don't understand this gamble. Twenties all the way into his short as nine to four. Like, I loved him last year, and I thought he'd be Brown Advisory Turners the lot. And every time, bar that one blip where he did win over two mile four, where but he was beating a load of stayers who were all having their first run. He had a brilliant turn of foot, but I don't like the way he hunts out the back. I don't, there's very little I like, and obviously the full last time. So I'll be keen to take him on. And as Gav said, if Broadway Boy runs, I think that changes a lot because we've got used to it being the last few years, it's been that like sexy horse has had a bit of a gimme. I remember when Statler and Romuald Fred, six runners, two went off, never saw anyone again. And, that, and we could have had that sort of front end again. But I don't think we're going to get that. If we've got Broadway Boy, he's not going to slow down. He's just going to go off. And if he stays past three miles, he stays past, he's going to go. And that's going to put a lot of the pressure on the jumping. And it's all very well hunting around the back with Corbett's cross. But if you're two fences down turning in, you're not going to catch him. So, yeah, just keen to take on Corbett's cross. And I don't want to play the handicaps too soon. Yeah, fair play. Um, Flynn, have you got a boost for day one for us? We do indeed, but nobody's mentioned him yet. Uh, em Embassy Gardens, 11 to 4 from 9 to 4 from the National Home Chase. I do like Embassy Gardens. <laughs> there you go. Um, best price out there is 9 to 4, and we've gone 11 to 4. Um, I just couple up with some thoughts on Neil Antino, um, just to add to obviously the weight drop from his French mark. Um, I, th I thought that he went fairly hard in that race that Sergino won, um, yeah. and did really, really well to actually stay on and finish third. So, it seems too obvious, and normally when it's too obvious, it's normally a bad thing. Um, but Mil uh, Milantino, uh, uh, I think it's seven or eight to one with us. Uh, I think it's a bad bet for the rules. The, the, the only thing with someone like Milantino is... Um, he, he hasn't ran at a level yet good enough to win the boodle. So you'd have to... You'd have you'd need him to put his you'd best foot be, forward. You'd have, to be given, you'd have to be given ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call it twenty. So, he's so now given he, the ten. So, so, so now he can run to the same level, and he's ten pounds above. Is that what you're saying? There you Joe? go. There, that's what I'm saying, Pete. You got it. You got it. <laughs> there's there's plenty in them um, bigger races like the um, Spring Juvenile and stuff like that. I think that's how we have to work these um, uh, Boodle's horses and, and, and maybe look at the ones. Um, Falling out the back of the telly sometimes. Um, lads will roll on to day two. Uh, Sorry, Lee, Lee, two, two sets. Roger, Flynn, have you seen much money for anything in particular just on day one? Like, of it, like the favourites or anything from the Irish? Or I know it's still early days. Uh, while you guys are talking on day two, I'm in the uh, system now, so I'll have a dig into day one and I'll see. I'll okay. have a look across all days and see if there's any juicy prices. I won't. I won't name any dockets specifically, but I'll tell you when any decent advice is taken and then we can all marvel. Okay. Yeah, dear two lads, um, the bar in Bingham, as it's called, um, used to be the Ballymore there. Um, we've talked about Ballyburn. Gav, I'm going to come to you first. Um, let's say Ballyburn is supreme bound. What are you going to back in the um, Bingham there? Um, to be honest, there isn't anything particularly jumping out at me in this. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit like last year that we had sort of situation didn't we where you had was it champ kylie uh gaelic warrior in perry pass all kind of going for the the same race and all of a sudden then it gets to the stage where on the day the the irish money comes and it just tells you what's going to win doesn't it um so i think we could have a sort of a, a similar scenario um where you've got kind of well the the horse at the top you've got mystical power you've got illa atlantique you've got slade steel you can make a case for them all but they're all kind of short enough as well um, the one that I did think is potentially overpriced was Predator's Gold at 12 to 1. Um, I don't think he's done a lot wrong so far. Um, and I think he could Im improve further and, and put, sort of put himself into that picture. Um, the only thing that does worry me with Predator's Gold um, is purely around the jockey bookings, because you would imagine Paul Townend um, is probably going to go on Il Atlantique. And if he does, we're probably going to end up with uh, Patrick Mullins on Predator's Gold. Uh, if somehow Danny Mullins gets on board him, I'd be a lot more interested. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably leave it if Patrick's out on him. Yeah, fair. Joe, what about you? Uh, Willie Mullins got plenty of options here. Could go up, down, middle. Uh, what do you fancy? Let's see again uh, if Ballyburn does go to the Supreme, what you're taking in the Bingham. Yeah, I mean, I think if Ballyburn goes to the Supreme, they might send Mystical Power up in trip. I know they've got different owners, Lee, but I think these two horses are the best opportunity for them to win both races. Ballyburn in the Supreme, Mystical Power perhaps in the Ballymore. Um, he's got that nice raw pace as well. He's 
definitely inherited inherited the Galileo and the Annie Power traits there. He's plenty quick enough and going to be strong up that hill. I just think Mystical Power will really like Cheltenham as well. He doesn't do too much wrong. So even if you look at the likes of Slade Steel, who's got that nice stamina stay in power, he's also going to go where Ballyburn doesn't go. But Mystical Power has that speed to go with it. So I think if turning for home, Mystical Power is the one that's still there in the first two or three he is the one that's going to take all of the beating. Il Atlantique, I'm starting to worry about him. I know he's been beaten in a few sort of finishes. You could look that down. You could look at him and say he's potentially a weak finisher. I'm not so sure he's a weak finisher. I just think he's been beaten by better horses. But I would still side away from him here. I think mystical power. And I'd love to see Annie Powers' baby go and win at Cheltenham. I just love that. <laughs> yeah, really well bred there, mystical power. You can power. imagine on ITV. Uh, yes. Um, Pete, what yeah. about you? Um, what do you fancy? Is there any each replay in this uh, market? Um, so just just another thing, lads. So if anyone wants to, obviously, I know some of you can probably see the questions on YouTube. If anyone sees a question, they want to answer it, then just fire away, just so that people, if you if you guys obviously on the in the audience, if you keep asking your questions, we'll just pick them and just we'll answer them as we go along as we can. And any li likes on the video, much appreciated as always. Um, just going obviously where we're on the novices. Kieran's mentioned Firefox for the Supreme. I do agree. I do think that is a great price for the Supreme. But the downside is if Ballyburn runs, obviously, you, you're then I'm not saying you're on a losing docket. And I think if Ballyburn runs, then he's probably the most one of the most likely rivals. Um, but that would be my hesitation with going that way. Um, in this race, I do find it very difficult. I, I look through and this is why I would have preferred Ballyburn to come here because mystical power has got that raw ability it could be anything but i question how inexperienced the horse is and, and jumping yeah. ill atlantique i cannot trust that horse three times off the bridle beaten three times i know they're by good horses like reading tommy wrong is probably going to be a good horse firefox stellar story maybe um but you look through the only victories against farinelli and diane boy discares didn't come off the bridle and either so but you listen to the vibes coming from the camp and they think this horse is up there like as in a really nice horse but um, and Slade Steel is, the, I think, the solid option. And I think a lot will come down to how Ballyburn gets on. If Ballyburn bolts up, Slade Steel will be going off favourite. If he doesn't, you could easily see the, the early money come from Mystical Power and Atlantic. Um, but I do like two of the English horses in here. I do like Gidley Park. I know he's took a bit of a knock in from last time because he didn't do it in a fashionable way. He got the punters out of jail that day. I remember on trials day, not out of jail, because quite a few favourites won, but there was I've not seen cues like that for a long time, people collecting off him. Um, and the form was being frank with Lucky Place, obviously finishing, um, he gave a stone to the horse of, who was it, was it Anthony Honeyballs, the one the uh, in the Mayor's Novice. Two seconds, I'll just find that. Um, to Golden Ace. Yeah, he gave a stone and only got beat three quarters of a length. So that form isn't as bad as people make out. And handstands. I think Ben Paulin's got a, a, um, a good few novices this season. So I, 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 wouldn't be putting, I wouldn't be put off by them. But this is almost at a point where I think I might even end up waiting to a lot closer to the time, see who's going where. Because you're going to get a lot of form coming from the Supreme. If something hacks up for the mm -hmm. English or if something hacks up for the Irish, it'll help with Ballymore. Yeah. Quick one, Pete. What's the mark? What's the market like, Flynn, for um, the bar in Bingham? Have you seen much money um, behind away from Ballyburn for this race? Uh, so just spin for the market first. Ballyburn is 11 to 10, but I mean, you, you can kind of discard that one. Mystical, uh, mystical Power is 3 to 1. That's obviously the big shortener in the market after its run last time, albeit only a four runner race. Uh, Slay still 7 to 2. Ear Atlantic is 4 to 1. Reading Tommy Roll 7 is negative 10 bar. Um, have you lads got any thought on the Nicky Henderson horse, Jinko Blue, here? I'm assuming this is the target. Um, and we know there's a bit of a cloud over the yard at the moment. But do any of you chaps give a chance of that one? I, I, I don't know if he totally stays in this sort of class i think i think that would be my my only concern with him i don't i i wouldn't necessarily see him as a horse that's been campaigned ideally for Cheltenham. i think that's what my concern would be and i actually think he's a bit more of a flat track horse so he, he's got a lovely engine flynn i i'm, I'm not I'm not down that but i'd definitely be concerned about him with regards to Cheltenham anyway but again the lads might might disagree with me there at the same time yeah pete pete i'm going to come to you because i can't see the questions is there any questions that are standing out there from um any of the viewers um no no not really i've well, just answered the two just then the the rest is coming on to opinions and the handicaps like bally adam and um uh no the ordinary Joe Joe. The Coral Cup. yeah we'll, we'll we'll come on to them lads um yeah, we'll okay. go on to brown advisory here um joel come to you first this time for the brown advisory any strong opinion on the race 
Yes, uh, Lee. I mean, Factor Far is just a savage, isn't he? He's going to be pretty hard to beat over this sort of trip. But I wouldn't give up on a horse like Monty Star. He's a very, very impressive yes. guy. He jumps like an absolute stag as well. There's no way this boy's coming down and he's just going to gallop all day long. So if Factor Far is going to beat Monty Star, he is going to have to find some sort of turn of foot coming up that hill, which I think he will. But I definitely wouldn't underestimate Monty's star here. It's just a shame we haven't got a Sheevely Park horse in here because we could have almost a repeat of Champ, Manila Rindo and Alaho coming up with those three colours. But we've um, we've lost Grange Clare West, so now we might have to just deal with uh, Factor File and Monty's star for the one-two. Stay away phase, lovely, by the way. Um, just not sure how to pinpoint him at the moment. So Factor File, just about to beat Monty's star for me, Lee. Yeah, look, I really do like Monty's star and... Um... Built in maybe it's like a Mona Lee style um, yes. type of course. Um, same colours as well as uh, Manila Indoor. Gav, any uh, strong opinion on this? Yeah, to be honest, uh, Fat to the, the one to be, isn't he? But he's just, I think he's a bit skinny at four to five or, or even money, whatever he is now. Um, I think Stay Away Face probably the, the the best value really at, at three to one, but even that's quite quite skinny. Um, obviously, a lot will hinge on which way they lean with Grey Dawning because kind of Dan Scout says he's going to leave it up to the day, doesn't he? Um, so if that came here, um, I'd probably be a lot more interested in Grey Dawning here than I would in the Turners. Um, one that, to be honest, is probably not even worth covering because I, I can't see it running. Um, but I'd be interested to see where the walking on air goes. Um, so they've kind of had a bit of a all over the shop season. So he was in that race behind Henry's friend at Newbury. Uh, I think he's over like two miles six and he should have won that day. Um, obviously, Henry Friend has done loads for the, the form since. Um, they then looked like they bottled fences and went for a attempt to qualifier. They then didn't qualify. So now he's kind of in the, I think he's in like the Martin Pipe, the Cold Cup and the, the Brown Advisory. Um, so I'd be surprised with the way that Nicky is. He, he tends to kind of mine them, doesn't he? It might well be, a, say, like a Cold Cup this year and then maybe have another crack at chasing next year. Um, but he was just an absolute massive price and like 80 to 1. Um, and I've always kind of had him earmarked as a free mile chaser um, by walking the park out of, uh, is it refinement? I think it is off the top of my head. Um, like it won the, the punch down stays champion hurdle. Um, so it is, it's a lovely horse in terms of the breeding. Um, and I think there is a, a grade one chaser in there one day, um, but they just haven't unlocked it yet. So yeah, I imagine they're going to go more for the, the Coral Cup. Um, but if that one did go here um, and Henderson out of character kind of threw caution to the wind, then he's a, a huge price. Have you got any prices on that, Flynn, uh, for, for Gav? And what's the market looking like for this race? I do indeed. We're not, we're not quite the 80 to 1, though, on walking on air, so we must have uh, shot him out for that one. Uh, uh, Factor Power is 5 to 6, Stay Away Fay 3 to 1, uh, 9 to 2, Monty Star, 11 to 2, Great Dawning, 10 to 1, Embassy Gardens, and 12 Bar, uh, with 40 to 1 uh, on site about uh, walking on air. Um, Factor File here, I just didn't know if he was a bit flattered by that run about Gaelic Warrior. Caddy Warrior was a weird run, wasn't it? Was it three or four out where it made the mistake and then just wasn't the same horse? It was yeah. travelling really, really well up until that point. So I just don't know whether the price of Fat to Fall here is, is heavily based on that run. Um, and if it's so factored into that price, then it may just be way too short. Um, I thought a stay away Bay was so solid here. Uh, the only worry I would have is uh, did it have a really hard race in Open Company last time? Um, and if had a really hard race, then that would obviously be a huge negative. But um, you can't knock form at all. Very, very reliable. Being some good horses, Giovinco and the rest of this season. Uh, Big Grey Dawn, he's been there early, early on the season at Exeter as well. So um, I just think that's very solid. That's actually one of our boosts, albeit not chosen by me, uh, is out of 72 from 3 to 1, stay away from. Uh, that's under the specials bit uh, on the website and the app. Um, so yeah, I just didn't know if Facts File was a a bit of a short price considering what he'd done and if that race flattered him a bit last time. Pete, what about you? Is is he too short fact to fail now? I know you might on, on a bigger price there or would you be taking the Star Sports boost there on Stay Away Fay? I want, I want a bigger price on Stay Away Fay. I'm on 16, so... Oh, <laughs> um, there you go. With, 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 with regards, like, I... Again, this is a bit like the National Hunt chase. The game is moving. And in the last two, three years, everything's changed. Like In simple terms, this race, over the last 34 years, five horses won it who were unbeaten. However, in the last three years, all of them were unbeaten. So of those five, the last three years were all... So it's, it's just changing. You're getting the sexier types. And obviously that points towards like... But the, the thing is, when I look through this field, like 
Factor file is so difficult to weigh up because obviously he was beat by the absolute yak American Mike, who on his day, yeah, he's a brilliant horse, but on his on the rest of the days you're getting punished. So, uh, but it was first time out. But like Flynn said, I really don't know how to take that run at, against Gaelic Warrior. I think if there's a horse that could be like next next level, it's easily going to be him. Um, but that's why he's priced that way. You look at Stay Away Faye, and he's gone the Nichols old school route. It's the get them battered and bruised, get them in, get in amongst it. It doesn't matter if they go there with like whether it's first, second, thirds, does not matter. But he's done he's done his his tried and chosen route and 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 it's worked in the past. And that run behind Cappadano, where he turned in, he was he came back on the bridle, and everyone's saying he's a slow horse. Um and I thought that was a, a, a more than worthy run for a race like this. And he's only got to improve. I looked through last night and it was about one six two, I think he hit. He's got to improve probably three to five pounds to be winning this. Um, Monty Star, I think, is really, really solid and almost like a project. Like, as in, I don't think Henry, this if they win this, perfect. But at the same time, like what Joe said at the start, if he came, say, second in this, and then he goes up again, like, and the Gold Cup, he's then a big player in the Gold Cup. Like, I think that they're just so slow, as in that he's happy to just let the horse mature in its own time. Like, it's not going to be, I think, whereas the other two, like they could be like gun to the head, 125%. So the bo- bottom line is, I think Factor File short, but he's still the most likely winner. But I think Stay Away Faye at the prices is the one that's most overpriced. Albert Bartlett winner, they've got a great record, which I have got down. Six of the last 14 um, renewals. And I think if you're picking one, especially at seventh two, and you haven't had a bet in the race, I think he's the play. Yeah, definitely. If you fancy stay away for you, go and take advantage of that. It'll be the best price in town there across the star sports. Flynn, I will come to you because what are the prices for the champion chase? Now we've got a short price favourite as as the punt has been piling in on El Fabiolo. Yeah, it's very short now. Four to nine El Fabiolo. Um, John Bond's in there at three to one. Edward Stone seven. Captain Guinness, 16, Elixir and that's 18, then you're 20 bar. Um, I think he's a bit of a good thing, Al Fabiolo. But if I was to take him on with anything, it would be Edward Stone. But that's purely the angle that uh, they changed the tactics last time out and it works great. So it's a bit of an unknown. Whereas with John Bond, I think you I think you kind of know what, what you're going to get. Um, so if I was to take him on, it would be with Edward Stone. But I think that's the bookmaker in me, just trying to find anything to get a short one beat. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, I think I'm going to be in that place many a time in a week. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, Pete, I'll come back to you. We'll work around again. Um, can the form be turned around from the arc of last season with John Vaughan? And has Edward Stone got a chance? Or I, I, I spoke about this on a different show with um, Harry Beard there. He mentioned that they might have already played the hand with the tactics of Edward Stone. How do you think it's going to pan out? Yeah, I think Harry's probably right with that. I think you've almost played your joker card because I think if he'd done that in the champion chase first time out, they might have just thought, well, he'll come back to us. Whereas now there's yeah. no chance you're going to get a gimme. And they're like, and Alan King straight away was like, well, we might not do that in the champion chase. <laughs> well, well, if you yeah. don't do that, you've got no chance of winning it, mate. So you may as well give it a go. So, But as soon as he goes to give it a go, they're going to stick horses in here that are going to go and hassle him. And uh, they've got horses like Gentleman to me who they could run here just to go and hassle him for the lead. He's not going to get a gimme. He was very, very good with his jumping, but I think he's 10 years old. He's fifth in last year's champion chase. I'd be dis- like really disappointed if he's to do that. John Bond, I do not know what is going on at the moment. John Bond had everything and he was just progressing. He's it was it's almost like he's danced all his dances. I don't know what happened last. I think if James Bowen had held on to him after he made his mistake, he would have still won that race. I just think it was a little bit of a panic sort of thing. And he kind of used all his energy to get him there too soon. And and then that was over. And I think it could end up with those two again. However, I think El Fabiolo for me, I'll keep this simple, is he is streets ahead. However, this race always scares me. Five of the last six <laughs> odds on shots have got beaten in this. And I'll read you the list. We're talking... Chuck and Poissoir, eight to thirteen. <laughs> Daffy De Sil, two to five. Shishkin, five to six. That was the monster Shishkin, not average Shishkin. Um, Underso, four to six. Duvan, two to nine. And horses that are be- picking these up, they're not like the oh, second or third. But these are like anyone wins after that. The only the only good guy in the back in the gang is Altior, who went back to back. So, but at the same time, everyone's <laughs> knocking out Fabiolo is jumping. At no point have I ever watched him and thought, oh, he could have fallen there. Oh, that's cost him a load of lengths. He just has that machine. <clears throat> and he jumped. When he went with Gentleman Demi, I think it was 
three out of the DRF. They jumped it together and he landed it in front. And gentleman Demis, a solid jumper, he landed it in front and that was race over. As soon as he landed, he doesn't, it's a bit like people who say fast or slow is a better jumper than galloping. Like galloping is so, so quick when he comes out the other side. And now Fabiolo, he isn't so quick, but he's efficient. He does exactly what is needed and his engine's just so big. So he will be, it'll be so disappointing if he can't win this. Um, yeah. and, and, and if he doesn't, it will just be down to the stats, nothing else. He's the best horse in the race. And if this wasn't at Cheltenham, say it was just like at the DRF and they all go for the DRF, he'd win it doing handstands. It's just the fear of Cheltenham. Yeah, look, um, you're saying Altio was the, the hero for us. Flynn was rubbing his hands there at all them odds on getting beat. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll dry the eyes of the punters there because they are Aka killers, aren't they? Um, Gav and, and Joe, I'll come to you. I'll pose the question. <clears throat> so, El Fabiolo, does he win? And what's going to finish second to him? Uh, Gav, I'll start with you. Yeah, so for me, he, he does win. Um I got a, slight, a, a kind of a sneaky one here where like Pete kind of hit the nail on the head with where I was trying to get an angle into the race of if you kind of have something like a an Al Fabiolo's flawless, then the John Bonds and the Edward Stones try and go with him. They can't go with him. They then kind of fall over in a heap and then something random comes along and pips second. Um, and I was looking at Editor Dajit for um, that kind of second pipping. Um, and I was looking and I think Star Sports have gotten currently like 33 to 1. Um, and in terms of like a, a small little each way bet for a bit of interest, if you've missed the prices on Al Fabiolo, um, I just think that's a, a huge price. Obviously, I know there's kind of how the form's worked out since and stuff isn't quite there. But on kind of the, the rearranged Clarence House, wasn't it, the year before he went and won it and all that sort of stuff. It's just if there was one time where he's going to kind of pop back up and, and sneak into the, the frame, um, I just think 33 to 1 is a, a big price for him um, if the other two, two do sort of too much trying to chase Al Fabiolo. Yeah, fair. Uh, Joe, any any play in? I do like the the case for maybe Captain Guinness to be staying on um, for a second if the other two cut each other's throat. I think El Fabiolo is going to be kind of away and gone, but I can see um, a case for Captain Guinness. Anything il else uh, for second place there? Not really, uh, Lee. I could try and have a swing at something, but I simply think Al Fabiolo gets it gets it done. Um, Flynn mentioned about obviously the run of Edward Stone last time going forward. My issue there is that it just sets up then for Al Fabiolo to kick on from the front. I yeah. just don't think Edward Stone's at that level. John Bond, I think, is going to be ridden really prominently this time. He's got to put his jump into good use. Um, but I simply sit with Pete. Really, I just, I just think Al Fabiolo is going to be too good. Just a quick word on your Captain Guinness there. I absolutely love Captain Guinness, Lee, but I know he's got heart issues. It's more than one occasion now that he's had a bleed on his heart. He's actually had a defibrillating heart more than one occasion, twice, I think, this season in his three runs. And that would just be a big worry for me. I just wonder if his heart's actually still in it. Excuse the pun. But for me, Al Fabiolo takes the world of beating here. I think he can make two or three mistakes and still win. That's how far, far clear I think Al Fabiolo is. And people might have crabbed his jump in. Again, I'm agreeing with Pete. Nothing wrong with his jumping. They say he gets nice and low. Nothing wrong with that. You don't want to. You don't want to be hurling over these, giving them too much air. Good jumper, good traveller, fast ground, slow ground. Al Fabiolo just sprints up that hill past them here. Yeah, I think I'll be having uh, hard problems if uh, El Fabiolo doesn't get the job done. Um, lads, <laughs> yeah, you and me both, Lee. <laughs> yeah. We'll both be stood <laughs> we'll next be, to each we'll other, crying. We'll jumping the there, but yeah. um, what about anything <laughs> else? Yeah, um, day two. What about anything else? Uh, there's a few uh, handicaps in there. There's the big Coral Cup, and there's also um, the cross country and the bumper. Um, Flynn, any any big um, bets there for any of them other races, or are them going to be on the day type of stuff, the bumper and, and, and such like? I think with these races, look, any big, any decent sized bet tends to be on the day, um, just because the limits are raised. Um, we we have these anti postmarks in for a decent amount, but as you see from Oscar Checker, when you look on there, it takes the, the kind of smallest amount of money to move the market. But when you get to the day, you'll get a very decent sized bet with us, whether that be on the rails in taps or or having a bet online. So um, I think it'll be later on. I think Manella Indo will, will probably be fairly warm in the um, in in the cross country, but El, Fa El Fabiola will be a big one on the Wednesday, and I'm hoping that the uh, the favourites getting beat, Fiend, continues in that race. And if, if, if you guys are having heart problems, then you can come and see me and I'll console you. And that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, uh, I'm sure that bonus will be on your way, Flynn, if uh, El Fabio <laughs> gets beat. Um, Joe, will come to you in the middle. Anything else on day two? Yes, Lee, I got one of my bets of wait, the wait, week. Wait, two, two. 
Two seconds, Joe. Go just, for it. If Go anyone's it. got any of these, just right. So a few people have mentioned. So if anyone's got just when you're talking, if you've got any mentions, so yellow clay and you ought to know in the bumper. Um, no ordinary Joe in the Coral Cup, and then First Street. They're the ones I can see. So if I've missed anyone, if someone can put put your comments in again. Otherwise, if anyone's got anything to say about any of those, just throw it in when you're saying your own bit. Can I yes. just I'll quickly? I'll quickly mention that. But actually, them are the two bets that I've had. Um, you ought to know. I thought stayed on really well against uh, Jeroboam Mashan and the yellow. He wrote the comment. Um, <laughs> were you going to Were you going to say that, Joe? Were you? They're the two, Lee. They are the ones, but but <laughs> but it. but there's one that's the best, and that is you ought to know. That is that is the bet of day two for me by a long shot. That form that he showed at the DRF, like I said, we were all there, Lee, uh, behind Jeribu Mashan. I actually think Jeribu Mashan is probably the best bumper horse we've seen this year. It's unfortunate that we're not going to get to see him now. And I suppose the question mark with Jeribu is, would he be able to do it on a bit of a faster surface? But you ought to know, obviously, finished second to him. He'd had a long layoff on the track, but he won his first two bumpers really, really impressively. He absolutely smacked Croke Park on debut and then ran a real eye-catching race to win next time out beating Toto too. But what I like is he had to be cajoled along, but the more you got into him, the quicker he got. It was simply the further he went, the better he got. He's got one hell of a turn of foot. Now, if you go back to those two races as well at the time, he was actually touted to be the supreme novice hurdle runner at the time. He was the favourite going back to the beginning of the season again he's another horse he's had a few minor setbacks nothing to worry about so no real qualms but i like the fact that willie's just been patient with him he then obviously sent him to the drf first run after a long long break in really deep ground that had been chewed up plenty by that time already and he was just really really strong galloped all the way through the line the only one that picked him off was Jeroboom Mash, and he found a really nice turn of foot, but that could have been done to fitness i think when you get to Cheltenham, we're going to see an absolutely different horse here and I think this is going to be the main hope for um, Willie Mullins. Not a fan of Jasmine DeVoe, and I'm not a fan of Sete Chance, even though he ran a really nice race behind um, William Money. I, honest to God, believe that this you ought to know is a beast, and he's got a physicality edge on the rest as well. Double figure price. Joe, this lad's going will, off will, will Patrick Will Patrick pick him? I was going to see Will Patrick pick him. Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure because I, I Patrick was going to ride. Who do you want if his... he doesn't? Who do you want if he doesn't? Well, I want Patrick. I do want Patrick. He, yeah, but he knows what how if to he doesn't? Uh, Paul? Paul Tarnan? Can we have Paul? <laughs> um, so not fussy. <laughs> no. no. I like Patrick. I, I, I'd be very surprised if he didn't choose this as his number one, to be honest with you. I just don't see how you could choose Jasmine DeVoe based on that form over what we've seen from you all. No, like, I just, I, I, sometimes you just feel like you see one clearly. For me, he is by far far the best bumper horse that the Mullins team have shown this year. Of course, it's a shame that we're not going to get to see Maureen, but I don't like backing mares and bumpers anyway. You ought to know, lads, double figure price. Fill your boots. Ja <laughs> ja Jasmine, probably, they could probably give that ride to um, Jacob, couldn't they? Exactly. No, Jacob, exactly. Isn't that? Yes. Yeah, double green. Honestly, this this you ought to know, though, guy. You just get the more racing he does, the better he's going to get. Get it on. Fill Flynn in. Get on. What price <laughs> yeah, have we got? You ought to know, Flynn. What price? Sorry, sorry. sorry uh, go on, Flynn. What, what price is it you ordering all for the bump, are they? Give me two seconds. Lee, you can practice your expert MC in here. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and you can do some good <laughs> filling. Well, 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 uh, I'll, I'll fill. Look, I do think that Yellow Key does have a good chance as well. Um, had to come around at all the horses there. Didn't get the best of runs in that um, DRF bump uh, that you ought to know finished second. Jeroboam Manshan. Um, is obviously out the race, and we did see Maureen is going to be scratched. She'll probably um, still make it in. It was a minor setback there. Um, shame for connections there. Uh, Flynn, you ought to know what price. Nine to one, uh, and we are the best price about for joint with two other firms. So, yeah, nine there to one. There you go. Best price about, Joe. Uh, get stuck in. Gav, Cracking. what about you? Have you got a nice, tasty Coral Cup winner for us or a grand annual fancy? Yeah, so there was a, a couple that I quite fancied. Um, in the Coral Cup, there's a couple that are quite well found already. So obviously Langadan is just Langadan, is he? he doesn't really need any explanation. Uh, he yeah. just rocks up in the handicaps every year. Um, there was one that interested me, I think, but very soft, and that's built by Ballymore. Um, yeah. So Martin Brazil is kind of a very shrewd operator, isn't he? And he kind of got respect for what he has turning up. 
Um, and I saw he got a mark of 139. I just thought that could underestimate him. I think his RPR when he last won was something like 143. Um, and if it was more to come, he, he could kind of be underrated there. Um, but he would want it properly bottomless, um, like we had that Coral Cup a couple of years ago. Um, so, yeah, if it turned up like that, I would be interested. I saw someone in the comment was saying about Doddy the Great. Um, I can definitely see the case. I just can't see him getting in. He's just so far down the weights, isn't he? Um, the cross uh, the cross country, I have no real interest in. Um, it's one way you just wait to see what the ground looks like on the day. Um, it's looking like it'd be softer. So it's probably just a Milena Indo against Doubter Work race. Um, and at the prices, it just doesn't interest me. Um, grand annual wise, again, coming back to my mate Mozzie, um, he's seven to one, but he does look like he could be that kind of graded horse in the handicap uh, for, for Gavin Cromwell. Um, the other one that did interest me again for Gavin Cromwell was Paf Daru. Um, but to be honest, he was second last time to that Madeira um, and he's got his Irish tax on them. That probably ruins his chances. Um, on the flip side, if it did come up good that day, um, Strawfan Jack, was he's got some nice form in the book. Um, he won at the October meet, I think, last year. Um, and then he kind of went on, not done a great deal since in terms of like actual bear form, like it was stuff like second to Shishkin and things like that, where his mark has just tumbled down. Um, and now he's coming back into a kind of more realistic level um, in a handicap. I think he's a big price, so like 33 to 1, um, and he gets a lovely racing weight. So, yeah, if that was good ground, he would interest me in the in the Grand Annual. Um, the bumper, to be honest, I have no interest in the in the bumper. Um, one that I have got a slight eye on um, is Cantico. Um, I know Pete and I talked about him at the start of the year. He was kind of quite well fancied by the, the Mullins team. Um, and then he flopped. But to be fair, I'd forgive him it because it was um, Leopardstown yielding ground. They went no pace at all. I think it was something like, 20, 30 seconds slow for the race time, even though it was yielding ground. Um, he then came out on heavy and put in a, a decent performance. Um, and yeah, I think he could go under the radar. And it, it's one that I might have a cheeky little bet on um, just in case he got a nice jockey book in. Um, and if he doesn't, then you're not going to be kind of any worse off in the, in the prices. Um, but obviously with those types of races, um, it's all kind of down to, to jockey booking and the money comes in, doesn't it? Can, yeah. I just, can I just quickly mention on Cantico, just just any chance I get to mention it, He's um he's actually by a lovely mayor called All You Need. She's one of Barry Connells. I just thought I'd drop that in there. <laughs> Team Barry there, always support. Who's, who's, who's Barry Connell? <laughs> Brings a machine <laughs> called the Marine. Pete, what about you? Um, day two, give us uh, maybe it's a handicap one or any fancy one. Um, I think I think you guys summed up the bumper quite nicely. It is a wide open race. I agree with Gav. I think of the of the top end, like I. I'm not a massive fan of yellow clay, but I do like you ought to know. But um, on Gav's point, I think he's, I don't know what price, well, Flynn will probably be able to, Flynn, what sort of price is Cantico now? He I'm was around 60, I'm okay. not too sure about Flynn for, for Star I'll, Sports. I'll carry on talking. So, so 14. he's, um, gen 14s, yeah. So I think, of 14s now, once the jockey, jockey bookings come out, I think he'll be maybe third, fourth, fifth string. And I could easily see him being one that, you, if you look on the exchanges, you're getting 34. Like when he got beat at Christmas, he went out to 40 to one and then he won and now he's back into 14s. And I think you could easily, you probably end up getting 25, 33 to one, maybe bigger on the exchanges. And I think he could run a big race because the Mullins lot don't know which their best is because they've got such, obviously such a good combination of horses. Um, so away from the bumper, cross country, I know everyone doesn't seem too excited. I love the cross country i've had loads of winners in it i've had loads of success and the last five years it's been a little bit different to normal i mean i've just followed tiger roll every year but the last if you go back over the last five years the, the front two in the market have finished one two every race so not necessarily favorite then second favorite but one off has beat the other in every race so if you just want to play it simple you can wait till the day and pick one of the front two or do a forecast um obviously uh, Elliot's won six of the last seven, and it's no secret that he's farming it at the moment. Um, for me, I think Manella Endo, I mean, it was only second in the Gold Cup in 2022. So comes here. Henry said that obviously been training for Fox Hunt, well, enjoys the Fox Hunter's style of racing and has been doing that sort of thing for years. Um, so I don't think that'll be a shock. And then I think it's fairly simple. If you want to pick an Elliot horse, you wait till the day. If it's soft, you go Delta Work. If it's not, you go Galvin. But I think the way the track is at the moment, like with it got, having pretty much swimming pool in the middle of it and, and the cross country doesn't drain that well, you think Delta Works is going to be on the premises regardless. Um, nothing in the Grand Annual. I think that race is so difficult at the moment. Um, and in regards to Coral Club, um, I really hope Langer Dan doesn't win. Um, and No Ordinary Joe, I saw, I saw someone mention No Ordinary Joe. I think he's rock solid. I don't think you get much more solid. Obviously, Iroco, um, he was behind Iroco last year 
or uh, Iroko. And he was, in effect, he was ahead of him from 50 yards to go. He just got done by a better stayer. He went up seven pounds. Buddy One, I think, was in third, who's about a 150 rated horse, gone up, I think, 15 pounds since. So, and he's on one pound higher, possibly. We all saw him get the old choke hold flipping ride last time out at Kempton. So we know he's fresh. We know he's fit. He's ready to go. I think he's rock, rock solid. Yeah. A rock or must be that um, the posh way of saying a rock or there, Pete. <laughs> hey, look, we'll, we'll move on. That's now. how I used to spell it on my Twitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flynn, just, just go over that day two price boost forward. What's the terms there again for stay away for you? Yeah, stay away for you. It's out of seven to two from three to one for a max stake of 50 quid. Uh, I've actually got the bet ticker open on my computer here so I can see all the bets coming through and the uh, treble has definitely been the most popular of all the boosts. Uh, but there's been a few to stay away from as well. So. And do you want to just go over that treble again just so people can uh, maybe get on if they haven't been at the start there? Yeah, Lossy Mouth, uh, Gallup Anderson for the Gold Cup and El Fabiola for the Champion Chase. Uh, out to 5-1 to one from around 7-2. to um, As I said at the start of the call, um, the best price out there is 3.59 to 1, I think, with Skybet. We pushed it out to 5 to 1, so that's why it's proven a bit popular. Um, one thing I did just want to mention, I think Gav might have mentioned Path de Rue for the Grand Annual. Um, Path de Rue's form before the run, when it came second to Madara, ties in with Hunter's Yarn. Um, Hunt, um, Hunter's Yarn beat at 10 legs, so um, it might be worth just seeing how Hunter's Yarn goes uh, in the arc. Or, um, you like, you like him, don't you, Flynn? You, you like him, don't you, Flynn? This <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a little wink, yeah. a little wink. <laughs> yeah, it's two, it's two name checks, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a working Massive each way double on. Yeah, probably. Look, um, the, the, the course, just to, just to say the cross country course, couldn't be worked on a day as we record just because it's actually um, basically flooded. Um, there's plenty of uh, wet patches. Yeah, people are swimming around there. And I think the Gordon Ell Elliott team did try to work on that a day and couldn't work on it. So it's just a... Um, you know, a, a little thing there to watch out for. Um, we'll go on to day three, lads. We're halfway through. Um, the pud the puddles might be flowing from tears from the punters or, or, or joy from them, traders over at Star Sports. But um, we'll start with the tuners. Uh, Flynn, what's the market like for the tuners? Who's leading the market? Yes, in fact, apart from the four, but obviously more likely to go to the Crown Advisory. Uh, Ginny's Destiny, uh, Destiny 5 to 2, Great Dawning 11 to 4, Passar Vega 4 to 1, Gaelic Warrior 4 to 1, uh, Iroko is 11 to 2, and then you're 7 to 1. <laughs> yeah, that's how you see it. Uh, any fancies from yourself, Flynn, for that turn as the uh, novice? Uh, look, it's a, it looks a real messy race. It looks a bit of a below class race, I thought. Um, the one I side with would be Grey Dawning if it went here for the Star Sports Ambassador. I'm going to plug that, Harry Skelton. Um, I just thought that um, he's really, really, really solid, uh, solid form this season. Obviously, won well over three miles last time, but coming back to uh, two and a half miles. Um, obviously, got beat by Billy's Destiny at Cheltenham over that trip, um, but made a bit of a horror mistake uh, coming to the finish. So, um, I'd like to think that Grey Dawning would turn that form around with Jesus. Yeah. Um, Gav, I'm going to come to you for the tuners. Um, would you forgive Gaelic Warrior or not? Um, he looks like he's going to be coming here. Um, he's probably a big price on, on what he's achieved, but he, he bombed out the last day. Um, and I, I think I've missed the boat, maybe, he's with Grey Dawning. But do you think he's got a live chance? Yes, I think you kind of hit the head, nail on the head there with Gaelic Warrior. Obviously, he bombed out last time, didn't he? There's always that question mark um, about going that way around. Um, and it, yeah, it's just too many questions for me at a short price. I'd rather just try and take yeah. Gaelic Warrior on. Um, Grey Dawning, if it was me, I'd be putting him in the, the three mile race. Um, I think sometimes over that that shorter trip, it can just happen a bit quickly for him, um, which is why he kind of went halfway up the, the fence and took it with him, didn't he, uh, when he was behind Ginny's Destiny. Um, and yeah, the more I look at it, the more I just think Ginny's Destiny is just rock solid. Um, obviously, they, they won the race last year, didn't they, with stage style, and it just looks a very similar type. Um, I Yeah, I'm struggling to get away from Ginny's Destiny at three to one. Um, the one that would interest me if the fives drastically change and he come here um, is Fassar Vega. Uh, which might be a bit of a controversial one, but I've been absolutely screaming for him to go up and trip for, for God knows how long. Um, and it sounds like they may well do it. Um, but the last I kind of saw from Willie was that he's not working well. They didn't even know if they're going to go to Cheltenham. Um, but if it were kind of, if you went back to the kind of DRF vibes where they couldn't stop singing his name, uh, if you kind of had that going into Cheltenham over that trip, um, Fasar Vega would definitely come into it for me. I think he's a six or seven to one shot. 
Yeah, I, I will just say I spoke to Maria, um, who is part owner there of um, Fasa El Vega. What they're going to do is that they've been just giving him some vitamins just to perk him up a bit. That's uh, all all he needed. I would have said is is just to um, kind of live him up and get him on that boat. Um, Flynn, um, I just want to quickly ask again for the sign-up offer. Someone just mentioned about the sign-up offer. Could you just um, go over that again and, and what the terms are there? Yes, yeah, so I think Pete has posted it a couple of times in the chat on YouTube. Um, so if you sign up through that link, it will automatically give you the promo code PREVIEW25. And if you sign up um, and your first bet on Cheltenham, uh, up to 25 quid, will match it with a free bet. So PREVIEW25 is the promo code. If you have 25 quid on one of the boosts or um, just any race of Cheltenham, then we'll give you a matching free bet. Uh, the traders will work hard to get that credited as quick as possible. Um, if it doesn't go in automatically, then just jump on the live chat and one of the guys or girls in the office will try and help you out. Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, Joe, what about you? Tuners, what do you fancy? Uh, I'm warming to one Lee. The closer we get to the day, uh, the more I actually start to fancy Grey Dawn and short enough price at five to two, 11 to four. Now, the reason I come down on Grey Dawning is the fact that Ginny's Destiny is um, a superb jumper of offense. Physically, good traveler, brilliant jumper, and doesn't do much wrong. Grey Dawning, on the other hand, will throw in about three or four wobblies the way round, and he only he's only got three quarters of a length to find with Ginny's Destiny as well. I got a feeling this time, even though the trip's a little bit too short and I prefer to see him in the three miler, he's not going to go there because of fact to file. I think that's pretty much what Dan Scout is telling you. I do actually think that he is going to have plenty of gears to get past Ginny's destiny this time. And I think they'll ride him slightly differently. Don't get me wrong. The mistakes are probably going to be there now and then for Grey Dawning. But if he turns yeah. up there primed, he's had, he's, had a, he's had plenty of race in the season as well. So he's hardy enough for it. I just think he's going to have too many gears this time for Ginny's Destiny, who is, of course, going to go off in front and try and put that jump into good use. I've just got a feeling, Lee, they're going to find that three quarters of a length. And I think Grey Dawnen will take a little bit of beating here, I do. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I will like to see Fasel Vega run well. And I think Gaelic mm. Warrior will, will still turn up and, and give a good showing. Um, Pete, what about you? Um, do you like the top of the market or anywhere, any each way players in behind there? I agree with all of Joe's comments, but I've come out with the opposite answer. All his <laughs> homework, basically, like that's that's the only reason why. Like, obviously, any we all can look at this market and see that this is not uh, grade grade one unless they all run to form. Um, but I don't like grade Dawning because of the wobbly, and I just think mm. he's going to be put into pressure at some point, um, and is now coming to favouritism. That's why. If it was five to one, seven to one, or whatever. Um, but with regards, I think this is really like quite simple that. If they ride Gaelic Warrior, like they're not worrying about going right-handed and doing all that, because it's not like we're watching him jump over fences and he's like jumping like three. It's almost like over-exaggerated because the jockey's worried about it. I think he could be that far in front if he's on a going day, like not like what we saw at the DRF, a bit like Marine Nationale, because both of those just emptied four out for uh, Gaelic Warrior, two out for Marine Nationale, and they just found nothing. But if he's on a going day, like any of his other runs, you look what Blood Destiny's done, Nilate Thompson's has done. Like he's absolutely hammered these horses on the bridle. And if he's going, if he's on a going day, I know it's not a track that's going to suit him to perfection. But if your 10 lengths clear, it's not going to matter. And like he is the, the proper grade one horse for me in it. I don't think Fasal Vega will end up running. I do like Iroko, Iroko, however you want to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> and uh, But it, it is a big ask at the end of the day. But like Joe said, is this is looking at below par turners unless the big boys turn up in full form. So I would give him an out, outside chance. Um, and of the front two, I'd prefer Ginny's Destiny for the reasons that Joe said, but because Ginny's Destiny does jump straight and all of that. But for me, it's, for me, it's simple. I think, I think Gaelic Warrior, 9-2, if you know he's going to the race, obviously it doesn't matter, non-runner, no bet. Like, he'd still be my play. Like, if again, like Marine Nationale, like, I think at least one of these two is going to run. Maybe they don't win, but I think they're going to run a lot bigger races. I just can't see a way where I look back to the Ballymore last year and you look, watch Gaelic Warrior over hurdles and he was nothing like what he was in the Boodles. He'd learned an awful lot. And you look at him over fences. He's not jumping miles out to his right. He might get a little bit. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Ginny's destiny is going to be scraping the paint and jumping every fence perfect. Yeah. And he's and he's not. But at the same time, his engine is group like group one and blood. Like, he's been beaten by Imperi Pass. That's it. And he was going to be the stayers' favourite in the works. He was favourite for four races at the start of this year. Yeah. So like everyone's literally had that one run where he emptied. What if he'd ended up 
say coming up, say he ran his race, and he, even if he was beaten just by factor file or he beat factor file, he'd be like four to seven for this. And I think everyone is just where people seem to be happy to forgive Marine National. There seems to be no forgiveness for Gaelic Warrior, and he's now drifted and drifted. And he's like five or six to one, and I'd I'd much rather take my chance on him. Yeah, look, you could get an each way play, and maybe as if that um, jump in tendencies do come into play, and he does finish second or third, you you could get your money back there. Um, Look, we'll, we'll roll on, lads. Um, kind of the middle distance here, the Ryanair is next up. Flynn, I'll come to you for the prices for the Ryanair, please. Yeah, just quickly, I, I think the Gaelic Warrior is probably one horse that we would love to lay at Cheltenham, um, just because he's one of those who's doing more than us. Not because you think. Take my money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just think he's going to really struggle just turning left on left on left. Um, and the fact that he managed to get beat in the boodles. We actually did a preview with Davy Russell. Um, before the Boodles, and he just said, this thing has got so much in hand, it's unbelievable. Um, and it probably did, it just couldn't handle Cheltenham. So uh, that would be one we're, we're trying to lay on the pitch, that's four to one with us, uh, Kelly Warrior for the Turners. Um, do you want, uh, jump back to the Ryanair, El, Fa El Fabiolo's favourite there, uh, seven to four, but obviously probably not going to go. Banbridge, 11 to four, Empire Lens, seven to two, Stage Star fours, Fast or Slow Fives, what's not going to go? And then you're seven to one bar. Uh, one of the boosts here is uh, Bambridge. Um, let me just double check what that is. I think we're 11 to 4 out to 4 to 1. But let me just double check that. Yeah, just have a check there. Um, Bambridge um, might need good ground um, to see the best effect. Um, lads, Gav, um, what you what you sticking with there for the turners? What are you going to go with? Uh, for Do you mean for the right now, for the turners? What we uh, right now, sorry, right now. Right now, yeah, for me, uh, stage star is just the, the standout for me. Um, I would completely draw a line through last time out. They, they basically kind of said it live on telly, didn't they? That you go and have a crack if it's not working out, just pull him up and come home. Um, so yeah, for me, stage star, if you just put draw a line through that, uh, that, that form and look back at the, the last run, um, he's a, a serious weapon uh, and a bit like Ginny's Destiny, you just know that he's going to kind of keep going from the front. Put everyone else under pressure and they're probably going to make mistakes um envoy allen does like deserve some respect but he's, he's 10 now um and in a weird way as much as i love him it would almost be underwhelming if there wasn't something better than him this year as he's a sort of a, a 10 year old um and in the the two at bigger prices away from stage side that i quite liked um for, for an each way bet were fugitive and uh gar law who's going to be supplemented for the race um i believe they're both around sort of 20 to 1. um fugitive really impressed me um, in the, the December Gold Cup, where it was kind of a frantic pace, come with that late run. And I think that kind of race setup would play into his hands in, in the Ryanair. If Stage Star goes off from the front, it gives him something to sit in and aim at. Um, and Gar Law, again, is just being kind of a, a different horse since coming back from a few issues. Um, and I think that the confidence behind him that they're going to pay the money, supplement him, and give him a crack, um, those two at each way prices interest me. But yeah, Stage Star's the, the definite one for me. Yeah, fair. Uh, Joe, what do you think about this Ryanair open market? Um, any fancies? Yeah, I mean, I, I fancy a few, but not enough to put my put the spuds on it just yet. Lee, anyway, like, I mean, I really like Bambridge. Um, I've got a feeling he's going to run here regardless of ground. I don't know what it is. I can just see him turning up. And, of course, he won the Martin Pipe on, like, sort of good to soft. So I, I think he's going to run. I've just got a feeling, regardless of ground, he will show up and probably run a decent race. Um, it's a difficult one, Lee. I haven't really got a standout. I don't think Phil Dawes getting the respect he deserves. He's only got a couple of lengths to find with Dino Blue and with Al Fabiola. If he stays the trip, I'd find him quite interesting. Of course, he's the only six-year-old in the race as well. He's improving, improving, and he's entitled to improve buckets as well on what we've seen this year as well. So he could be the one that's thrown in. And of course, without um the cold out colours now, he will be running in the Rob Core colours. A double figure price. I wouldn't put anyone off back in Phil Dor each way. However, I think the likeliest winner is going to be Stage Star. And again, he's similar to Jilly's Destiny. And this is just a credit to Paul Nichols, really. He really does know how to get his jumpers to jump a fence. I know, I know it sounds very obvious. This is the game that we play. Yeah. But if you go back and watch him win the Turners last year, that jump at the final fence was huge. Like, And that really, really impressed me. He's got a lot of capability to Stage Star. And he probably doesn't get the, the credit he deserves because he's owned by the owners group. I know they've had Pentland Hills win at the China Festival. Tell you what, Stage Star's a hell of a good horse. His 166 rating doesn't underestimate him. It doesn't overestimate him. It puts him bang in the mix for the race. But at the moment, I take a chance on Phil Dore each way at a double-figure price because I think he's a massive improver and being overlooked. 
Yeah, money down for the Rob Core team, but is sticking with Gordon Elliott now for Phil Door. And yeah, shout out to them. Um, owners group uh, with Stage Star. Uh, Pete, what about you for the Ryanair? What's your winner? I literally, Gav's pretty much summed up everything that I would have said about the race. I totally agree with the last Stage Star. I mean, I think five to one is pretty big a price, to be honest. Like yeah. you look at the form of that November, the November handicap that he won absolutely smashing uh il Ridotto. um they obviously went on to frank the form i think his form's above what envoy allen did last year i know obviously it's different because it's graded to handicap form but obviously we know stage star did it in the turners last year um i do like um bambridge but i would question whether he, he's going to run i don't think they'll risk him with the obviously the melon chase as an option um and of the bigger prices i do like fugitive as well um but I, I think as as a main play of the front three, um, despite my love hate with Envoy Allen over the years, I think uh, Stage Stars are one for me. Yeah, fair play, uh, Flynn. Um, what was that price boost that you had on uh, Banbridge? Yeah, so it is four to one from eleven to four. Um, so huge, nice little boost on Banbridge there. Um, I'm a huge fan of Envoy Allen here. Um, he may be my nap for the, uh, for the whole meeting. I just think that he travelled all over them last year. Uh, travelled. Uh, travelled all over them and, and I don't think the race looks fantastic this year um, and his form's actually better, been better over the winter this year compared to last year so um, I just think he's primed, Chelman suits him down to the ground, he's won at the festival many times and I think that this is his race Yeah, just a quick word on Banbridge I do think it needs better ground but like Joe says, I think you'll take a risk anyway and look, if you blow on Cheltenham sometimes it could it could change the ground um that quick so that's a huge price boost there 11 to 4 to 4 to 1 um across the star sports so take advantage of that um flynn um what are the prices for the stairs um that's the feature race on day three um any clear market leaders now uh so to who is three to one irish point 100 to 30 crambo is 11 to 2 so gerhard eights noble yates nine florin bought 12 monkfish 12 uh, and then your 16 bar. And just a quick shout out to the old boy side of Burley. Um, yeah. Who I think maybe slightly overlooked at 20 to 1 here, but I won't say too much of it. And I'll see what lads think uh, with, with their selections. Yeah, nearly old enough to go clubbing, it is. Say, to Burley. <laughs> he's a he's a multiple winner there at the festival. Um, Pete, I'll come back to you. Um, what do you like for the Steers? I, I did get whispers that Irish Point will take his chance in the champion hurdle. Do you think that's going to be the case? And is Tiapu the one for you? No, Tiapu is definitely not the one for me. <laughs> Tiapu is my like one it. of my most negative of the wow. of the festival. I really do not like Tiapu. I just think I look back and I think he's got brilliant form. Obviously, he's beaten his two big scalps in Perry Pass and Honeysuckle, both over two mile five. I think everything suits him. I think he's classy. I think he's got a lot going. For I know his record, he's got a record of something like eight eight for eight when fresh. So maybe that'll be the difference this year. Um, but I look back at last year's form and when you're not getting past the likes of Dashwell Drasher and Saeed of Burley, and everyone went on, on and on and on about how much he needed soft ground. And I know people questioned the ride and loads of other things, but I just don't understand how that wasn't your chance. The, the main thing that I think if you're back in Tia Poo, the positive you've got is that freshness angle. Maybe that will be the difference. But I don't think the stairs is like a normal three mile race. They obviously they do you do need to travel, but you look at the way they come off the bridle. Like you look at the cleave recently, like everything was off the bridle. Paisley Park and Noble Yates were off the bridle. Absolutely uh, I think it was two out turning in, they were off the bridle, yet they stayed on past everyone, and that is what it's gonna be like in the stairs hurdle. So for me, no, I'm not a fan. Um I, Irish point, I think it's an absolute travesty. What you go <laughs> Let's go with Chapman Erdogan, run behind Constitution Hill and uh, State Man. Oh, no, Constitution Hill's out. All right, well, let's go run behind State Man instead. But at the same time, connections, you can see why. You get second in Chapman Erdogan, it's a lot of money. Um, it's a, probably more prestigious than if you, even if you won the stairs, in fairness. Depends what sort of an owner you are. To, and obviously, how good you think your chances are with two. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that those two are um, anywhere near that level. Um, as in where people are saying Tia is so much better than Irish Point. Um, I just at, at the moment, to be honest, I find this race very difficult to go through. If the Irish Point isn't in the race, then I'm not really sure where I go with it. I do like Crambo coming the handicapper route, uh, like Paisley Park. Um, but it, I just think his form's very similar to Noble Yates, but he is a young improver. 
So I just think it throws it wide open. I, all I know is that I just don't want to be with Tia Poo. I've just got to find something to take him on with. Fair play. Uh, Joe, this the as for you? Yeah, I mean, look, I understand, Lee, why everyone is saying that Irish Point is going to be the number one of Rob Core. I just don't see it. I feel like everyone's given Tia Hooper a massively hard time. For me, he, he absolutely wipes the floor with Irish Point. I think Irish Point didn't come to Cheltenham last year because he's a flat track horse. I don't think he's going to enjoy Cheltenham whatsoever. Um, usually me and Pete agree on everything as well, so it's quite unusual that we're in different camps here. But um, for me, when Tia Hoopu ran in the States, if you go back and analyze... You're wrong, Joe. <laughs> well, <laughs> I probably am, Pete. You're probably right. <laughs> but if um, if you go back and watch the, <laughs> the stayers last year, he was travelling sweet as you like all the way going through the race. He was making some headway towards three out. When he got to the second last, he hit that one pretty damn hard and he was immediately off the bridle. I just wonder if that one jump took a little bit too much out of him and that actually ended the sting in his finish. I don't think he ran a bad race at all. He moved, He did what I'd like to see in a stay as herder horse, like Paisley Park, English Driver. He'd like to, he, he, he was held up, he made his move just as the... The further they went, the more of a move he made. That second last, I'm convinced that just threw him off his stride and he was never able to get back onto back into where he needed to be from there. He did come up that hill strong. Everyone's saying that was his chance to win it. Look, you've still got to be in the right position. I don't care what anyone says. He wasn't just going to suddenly find a turn of foot over three miles out of nowhere. If he's ridden again, perhaps a little bit more prominently, just to give him the benefit of the doubt that a mistake may happen. I do not see a horse in here that is going to beat Tia Hoopu this year. Side of Burley is getting too old now. Said the same last year. Might come back and bite me. Paisley Park, three seconds this season. Is that a little bit of a story in itself? I just don't understand this crabbing of Tia Hoopu. He is a very, very good horse. He's a seven-year-old coming into his prime. I like him. I like him, Leo. I'm going to fly the flag for him. And I think there's a reason that the stable like him a lot more over Irish Point. I don't think they'd be sending Irish Point to the champion hurdle if they thought it was going to detriment, be a detriment to the, the chances of Tia Hoopu winning. So for me, I think Tia Hoopu is one of the bets of the uh, bets of the festival. And I'm willing to put my neck on the line for him, Pete. I really do fancy him. There we go. Um, yeah, ridden last year by um, the Star Sports and by uh, Dick Russell. So he actually went on to win on Irish Point at Aintree. Uh, Gav, have you got a preference? Irish Point, Tupu, or do you like one of the other ones? Crambo's coming in unexposed uh, for Fergal O'Brien. He's got some live chances on that Thursday. What do you like in the stairs, Gav? Yeah, so to be honest, I'm going to be brave and tell Pete that he's wrong when he's not sat there. Uh, and I'm, I'm siding with Joe. Uh, so, yeah, to be honest, I really like to Hooper, to Hooper for this. The only thing that I don't like is that the price now. Um, so I think I took something like nine to two, and I thought it was getting a little bit skinny there for, for a race at the stairs. Um, I think three to one is is kind of really getting very skinny for a race at the stairs now. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm fully with, with Joe, to be honest. I thought it was a massive run for a six-year-old to do that in the stairs. Um, it usually takes that proper hardy type. Um, and to, to do that at six really impressed me. Um, like Joe kind of touched upon, you're not going to find a turn of foot with those three milers. You need to kind of have it full right. If you're going to kind of sit in rear, you need it to full right. Um, and he just it didn't full right. He obviously ran into the back of one or two. Um, and then he just doesn't quite get there. I think another year stronger. He's been kept fresh. It's purely the, the target for him. I think he's got a, a massive chance. Um, like Pete, though, outside of him, you're kind of scratching around trying to find something and not a lot is jumping out. Um, one that did interest me is if they went back to the stage with Florin Porter. Um, so obviously that's probably not going to be a very popular selection. Um, but I think he's about 16 to 1. Um, obviously, Chasen hasn't quite worked out. He hasn't really got a hope in stuff like the Brown Advisory. Um, whereas when you look at the stayers, he's got form of win, win and fourth. Um, and to be honest, when he was fourth last year, he clouted the second last, which really didn't help his course. Um, and obviously being a front runner, a bit like the stage stars in the Ginny's Destinies, you need it all to fall right. <laughs> um, and I just think if he had another crack at it and he got it all right, um, it would take a good one to come past him. Um, and at 16 to one, he might be a, an each way player if he goes down that route. Yeah, fair shout against uh, the market leaders there. Flynn, I'm going to come across to you. Um, we've got that Mayor's uh, novice hurdle. It's going to be looking like a cracking race. There's three at the top of the market. Dysart Enos is in there against um, uh, Brighter Days Ahead for Gordon Elliott and the Willie Mullins, Jade DeGruji. Um, How's the market looking? And is there going to be a definite outright favourite, you reckon, from them three? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Bright Stays Ahead will most definitely be favourite, uh, six to four. Uh, Jay De Cruz, nine to four. Dice at Enos, uh, four to one. Then you're into double figures. Uh, Golden Ace, 11 to one. Fun, 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 12. 
and then 14 bar. But I would imagine the price today's head will be a pretty warm one. Have you seen a lot of money for her? And is she your ideal winner or not? Uh, she won't become the day. Um, she she uh, she has shorted right up. Um, I can't remember what price it came in from, but it's been very very solid in the last couple of weeks. So um, yeah, I would have that would be a hot pot on Thursday. Yeah, Pete. Um... I, I don't want to blow me on Trump, and I was on your first of your shows, um, Joe and Gabba on as well. And my want to follow for the season was bright ideas of hedges, beautifully bred. Um, plenty of bigger phrases there. I hope people took advantage of from your channel. But, um, do you think she's the ideal winner for this race? Um, bright ideas ahead, or can you see Daysart Inos getting in? Um, the action she gets a five pound allowance from the two, um, the the the, the graded winners there. Yeah, you did put that one up. And no, I didn't take that price. <laughs> I, I have backed her since, but it was at much shorter prices. Um, I do think it's between two mares, but I think it's between the two Irish mares. I think both of those two we'll be talking about in... I'm not saying we won't be talking about Dysart Enos in the future, but I think both of them have looked... We've been waiting for a, a, like a really, really standout one the last few years. I think suddenly we've got potentially two. She's obviously come to a lot of the support through the, the market talk since... Elliot just is just going on and on about it. And I can totally see why. I don't think the drop back and trip will be any issue. I don't think ground will be any issue. Um, and I don't really know between those front two, like the way that Jade, Jade de Grugy looks like she's got a serious turn of foot. And especially if the ground is quicker, I think that will suit. Um, regards to this whole penalty structure, like I don't want to stand here and slag certain individuals off. But if you said to me, five pounds to have Paul Townend or Jack Kennedy aboard, or you obviously have the penalty to have uh, Paddy Brennan aboard. I take the uh, five pound penalty and have either of those two. Like I'm like I'm not being, and that's not me. Like well, a little bit, but the, yeah, the main thing is those two are those, those two are next level. Like as in between those two and Harry Cobson, like they are top 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 draw. Um, and I've got nothing with such little evidence. I think it will be between the two. Um, I don't really know which one wins, but. I can't split the front two. And I am against Dysart Enos. Yeah. Gav, um, what about you? Because two male one, we're now on the new course. Um, I think that'll suit bright ideas ahead. Will it suit Dysart Enos? And, and, and do you think that structure of the, the, the penalty, will that swing stuff in her favour or not? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Pete to a, to a degree, to be honest, that um, as much as I love Paddy Brennan, there is that element of, it's almost like a five pound claimer, isn't it? In in respect to kind of uh, the other two, of, they, they might be kind of that that far ahead. Um, to be honest, there's for me a lot of it's going to come down to the ground. So obviously, brighter days ahead shows that she can stay further. She can enjoy the the soft and open house. And for me, she's a proper kind of mare's hurdle next year type horse. Um, whereas the the thing that I think Dice Enos has got as well as the five pound um, is the turn of foot just looks electric. Um, I think when she won at Cheltenham, they said it was like the quickest entry speed into the, the hurdle and all the kind of the stats were backing it up. Um, so, yeah, I just think that she's got quite a frightening turn of, turn of foot um, and she could well be too quick for the likes of a, a Brighter Days Ahead and a Jay de Grugy that might be kind of, like Pete said, the names are going to stick around for years. But at the end of the day, if you kind of looked at it long term, would the likes of Dysart Enos beat those two in, say, a Mare's Hurdle next year? I don't think she would. Could she do it over two miles or two mile one or whatever it is here? I think that's where the pace could come into to kind of play, really. Um, so, yeah, she would be the the one at the prices I'd probably be siding with if I was having a bet now. Um, to be honest, I'm sat on a, a slip for Al Fabiola and Bright Days Ahead to come in uh, for like four figures. So I'm waiting for those two to land. Um, so, yeah, as much as I think that um, Dice Art Enos is, is kind of potentially frightening pace wise, um, I am fully sweating about Al Fabiola, uh, Al Fabiola and Bright Days Ahead. Um, so hopefully those two come in. Yeah, look, I hope them two come in as well, myself. Uh, Joe, what about you? Um, what's the winner of the Mayor's Novice there? Uh, outside my banker of the festival being Marine Nationale, my other banker, Lee, is going to be Jade de Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with this mayor. I totally understand why a lot of people are raving about brighter days ahead. But where's her turn of foot in comparison to Jade de Grugy? I haven't seen anything just yet. So for me, I just think this year, Jade DeGruji is going to outspeed um, Brighter Days Ahead. And then I think Brighter Days Ahead will turn out to be a better horse when she goes up and trip next year. I just think it could be quite ironic that um, 
that a year after Kenny Alexander obviously retired Honeysuckle, that he could just have another special mare on his hands here with Jade. I know she's obviously got the penalty for winning the grade three at uh, Fairy House last time out, but um, she's a really good traveller, and that turn of foot was just wicked. I don't see how Brighter Days Ahead beat her unless she's trying to put the stamina to the test early on, but I think Brighter Days Ahead is going to have to go one hell of a clip to stop Jade. Um, in regards to Dysar Enos and Crambo, I mean, I'm Fred in Cheltenham, I'd be I'd be over the moon if Fergal could get his first winner with one of these two, or even a double. And I'm probably going to back them just for that reason. But unfortunately, I just think Dysart Enos is a little bit shorter class here. And for me, Jade de Grugy is the absolute banker of the meeting, and I'll tell you all to fill your boots. I, li I like the confidence. I like the confidence. <laughs> um, lads, um, I, I don't need no explanation. We'll try and um, steamroll into the Gold Cup day. Um, just give us maybe one handicap or um, any other bets uh, from day three there. No explanation, but just what do you fancy? Uh, Gav, I'll stick with you. Let's go. Uh, so for the plate, I like Fear to Man. And for the Kim Muir, if he went there, I like Trelawn. Yeah, ne nice. Uh, them two. Um, uh, Joel, what about you? Um, well, I was going to save this to the end because this is going to be one of my, my bets. Uh, but great call in the per temps. I absolutely love her. Sorry, I should have I should have held back. You great call in Great call in the per temps, Pete. Um, Lee, sorry. She she's a she's a smashing mare by well for Ted Walsh. She's actually by Harzand, obviously, of course, won the derby. So she's got plenty yeah. of gears. I really like what she did the first day winning her per temps qualifier. She improved and ran a big race at the DRF as well. I just still think she's well handicapped off about one three six, I believe she is. I'll give a bit more detail we go into, but great call. I really like her chances on day three. I'm glad you pronounced it that way. As a Geordie, I'm definitely not be to pronounce that. <laughs> I, I had I had to ask the guys at the finishing line. I sent a few voice yeah. notes, and it still it still took a while to get to get the right thing. But anyway, got it. I've got you've it. been memorising that all day. Um, <laughs> Pete, what about you? Uh, nothing too much for me. I do like White Rhino in the potemps, and uh, Chantry House. I thought was a block job from his. From his first start back at Cheltenham, I thought when he ran behind Buddy One, I thought that was a race full of promise. And obviously, they've only managed to drop him four pounds since then, get him in. But if he runs back to, obviously, converts his chase marks back to Hurdling, I'm a little worried since. He hasn't really shown a lot. But again, it's a bit like the Boodles. You don't know what they're keeping behind. Whereas White Rhino is the opposite. Like, he just seemed to improve. He reminds me a bit of, um, uh, you know what I mean, Harry, where it was one of those horses mm -hmm. where he just kept going up the handicap and he just kept winning and winning and it's it's interesting that the one time where obviously he didn't win recently was uh when he needed to qualify and not go up the weights so i know a lot of people said oh was there an issue was this but i just thought in reality you've got to play the sensible call finish third or fourth so yeah i, I do like those two in the attempts um but yeah not a lot else on the thursday quite a quiet day for me yeah thanks gav for sticking with the script there just short Short and sharp for them. Look at them. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> Sorry, Lee. Sorry. And, and we only gave one each. <laughs> Flynn, what about you? Anything from day three? Do you fancy anything else there? Uh, just one would be good. Uh, good time, Johnny. Um, I, I probably seem like one of those who just backed year on year winners like Empire Lens, Side of Burley, and now Good Time Johnny. But um, even though it's been higher up in the weights compared to the Irish Mark, um, I think Tony Martin's been fairly credible with this one. And if it had run out of it, Sorry, I'm not going to say I ran out on its merit, but as in actually um, had it tuned up for previous races properly, um, then it probably would have had an even higher mark coming over here. So, um, and, and also the fact that they're still pursuing chasing and didn't drop back to hurdles. Um, I think the good time Johnny could go quite well in the king room. Yeah, good shout. Um, don't forget that uh, boost there for day three. That was Banbridge, 11 to 4 to 4 to 1. If you do fancy Banbridge uh, with Star Sports, limited time only. So make sure you get on, take advantage of all them price boosts. We will kick on to day four, Gold Cup day, lads. Um, Flynn, I'm going to come to you. Do you want to get in the price boost for day four just so people can take advantage of that? What's, what you got on offer there? Yes, yeah, so this is jumping to the Gold Cup, and this is Shishkin. So we've gone eight to one from thirteen to two Shishkin. Uh, that's for a max stake of fifty quid. Uh, so have your fifty quid on, and now with your four hundred if Shishkin goes in. Um, so opposing the front of the market, but don't forget the Gallop and Champ is in that trebles boost. Uh, that's out to five to one. Lost him out El, El Fabiolo um, and Gallop and Champ. So that's up there as well. Yeah, nice price boost there. Um, if you do fancy, maybe take advantage of. Uh, have 25 quid each way, maybe he's at eight there and, and, and get a run for your money with Shishkin. Um, what are the prices for the uh, Triumph Hurdle as well, Flynn, if you could give us them, please? 
Yeah, so Gino is four to six, uh, Marge Brat is uh, six to one, Kharjis eight to one, Stormheart tens, Salva twelve, and then you're fourteen to one. Uh, have you seen much money in behind for um, away from Sir Gino? I know Marge Brat being um, really well backed after the Dublin Racing Festival. Any standout there for you, Flynn? Uh, uh, just Marshba, really. Uh, uh, that's been the only real kind of shortener away from Sergino since um, mm. he kind of routed rivals. Um, one of the bigger prices that they've had a bit of interest in is bunting. Um, I don't know if they think the bunting is going to improve run on run, but that's all into 16. I think it was round 20 previously, so nibbles for that one. Um, but this one is going to be just trying to get the day off to a flyer from a bookmaking perspective and try and get Sergino beat. But uh, the only thing that, that I think. Uh, that gets a gene up in it is possibly is jumping. Uh, was very good at Cheltenham last time, but previous to that was a bit sketchy. Um, but other than that, he looks an absolute machine, doesn't he? Yeah, correct. His jumping did warm up um, the last day there, but uh, like you say, sprinted away. Um, Gav, what about you? Um, does Sergino just win, or is there anything that you want to take him on with? Yeah, to be honest, I think he does just win. Um, but at four to six for, for Triumph is, is kind of very skinny, those kind of odds on prices. And um, particularly with this whole thing going around at the moment with the Henderson Yard and are they all sort of fit and healthy? Um, that's more than enough to kind of put me off. It's one of those, that if you had the nice prices, good on you. If you haven't, you're kind of wasting your time going in at, at those sorts of prices now. Um, the one that stands out to me, and I was kind of very sweet on her for the, the DRF, is Car Geese. Um, so, yeah, I think she's about eight to one, like Flynn just said. Um, she obviously gets a seven pound mayor's allowance off Sir Gino as well. Um, obviously, she has, it might be saying like 10 pounds to find probably, um, but it gets her kind of closer. Um, and I think that she's, again, a bit like he could kind of keep improving. Um, it was only kind of the, the second run, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, I think she's the one for, for me at the prices. Um, but I have got her at the kind of one of those dirty specials for the, the DRF where it's kind of to win both races um, at 33 to one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fully in the, the car geese camp, really. Yeah, sometimes um, it's hard to take away from if you've already backed something. Um, like you say, if you're on at them bigger prices for Sergino, you're looking tasty. Would you take four to six? I, I, I'm unsure if I'd go steaming back in. Maybe it's just because of this, the form there of, of the Henderson Yard. Um, Pete, I know you're on a big price for Sergino. Are you still sticking with him? Yeah, definitely. Even if it was from an unbiased view, like if I didn't have a bet on it. I mean, I wouldn't want to be steaming in at four to six. But I was one of the fortunate ones from the start of the season to be on early. And I've got that same bet that Gav has as well with Carl Geese at 33s from the double up from the DRF. Um, just looking through, so what, someone's just messaged me. Um, and obviously, we don't talk other uh, previews during a preview. However, it has just dropped. Apparently, Tom Segal has just said that Salvatore Mundy is going to take his chance in the Triumph, apparently, according to him having a chat with Patrick Mullins. So obviously, wow. if he runs, the only horse horse that's got close to Sergino, remotely close, I mean, that'll be a bit of an interesting one. Obviously, Mullins can do it anyway, because if he doesn't win, he stays as a novice, he can run him, it doesn't make any odds. But at the same time, you should have a little clip of the video. Obviously, I'm advertising on my own channel, but you you watch the video and Nicky Henderson and Nico de Boinville, both their jaws just drop like, what? As if he's already having a bad week to then find out that the horse that's finished just upside you over in France... So, yeah, so that slip has just come out of the bin again. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for, for me, I think it's a gene all the way. However, I do think with this race, you have to exercise caution in the fact that loads of people like to steam in because he's looked like an absolute freak. But you look at his progression, and obviously he progressed from his first run to his second run like a monster. Um, 13 pound improvement. He was electric at Cheltenham, very little flaws, beat Bedette Road, who they thought was going to win everything. Um, but look at Majbra. Majbra, 138 RPR, which is only five pounds off him. And that was on his first start. They go on and on about him being a big chaser, massive horse and all the works. I would not be surprised for him to take another 10 pound jump. So while Sergino is definitely the one to beat, I think that this isn't going to be, put it this way, if it's four to six and I had no bet on the race, I'd be expecting Sergino to be at least evens on the day. Yeah, fair. Um, Joe, what about you? Um, what's your triumph winner? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a bit of a funny race, Lee. I've um, I have put up Carjes, um anti post at sixteen to one, and I absolutely love this mare. I've got a bit of a thing for like really good French mares, and she's another I've latched on, like latched onto, just like De Jade De Grugy, who's a half brother to um, State Man. Um, 
But uh, Kajet is another. She's got some really nice form that she brought over from France, and she's just improved on that nicely since she's come over here. She was chucked into the deep end on debut at Leopardstown, where she split Carla Conti and Nur Bernrig. Um, that form worked out really nicely in the end. And as mentioned there, she was wide all the way around. She was also keen. But she was actually the last off the bridle, which always tells me she's probably got the biggest engine. That duly came to fruition next time when she won the Spring Juvenile over at the DRF. And I think she's going to come on for it again. Now, I know Sir Gino is obviously a really short price and he looks very good. But in my opinion, he hasn't actually beaten anything yet. I'm not a fan of Bird at Road at all. I actually think he's a little bit of a pig as well. He, he's a horse that's by Muhara. Now, a lot of people were crabbing a horse called A Dream to Share, saying that he couldn't jump because he's by Muhara, just like the remainder of these Muharas. Now, Bird at Road's exactly the same. He doesn't know how to lift his front feet off the floor. So he's just running through fences while Sir Gino managed to pick up the pieces. Now, I do think Sir Gino's a very good horse. Do I think he should be four to six whilst he's wearing a tongue tie at Cheltenham as a young horse? Probably not ideal, to be honest with you. Uh, but the last thing to mention, so Carjace for me, um, Lee, but last season I missed out on Lossy Mouth. I was going to take a swipe at her before she'd ran over in England and I missed out. She was 12 to one and obviously we know what happened next. I have done the same with Salvatore Mundi. So what obviously Pete just said there is actually a little bit of music to my ears if he does run, because I can get my ticket back out of the bin, literally, because I do mine in store as well. But Car Jace, I think, is going to be um, a really, really big contender for Sir Gino. I don't think you want to be taking a Nicky Henderson horse at four to six, wearing a tongue tie at that young age at Cheltenham, when you've literally got a wall of Willie Mullins improvers behind you in the triumph. I just think the betting's wrong, and I would be more than happy to... To have a little bit of a lay at Sir Gino. There it is. Uh, just, just quickly, I did note um, you don't like horses with a tongue tie. The young. No, ones. don't, don't say it. The, 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 the national, no. But, but, but I did really? say I, really? I, but no, no, no. But I said I don't like tongue ties on young horses going to Cheltenham. Like Sir Gino's, a, he's literally a baby. He's just, he's okay. honestly, and hey, he's yo, I was just pulling your leg. I was just. I, I did make sure as I was saying that I was like, I don't like young horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. we'll go on, lads. I just want one bet for the Alva Bartlett. Flynn, um, what's the betting looking like that? Um, it's a kind of more open market, let's say. You can get some bigger prices. There's no shorties in this one, and it's going to be a thorough stamina test. Uh, what's the market like? Yeah, so High Class Heroes joint favourite six to one, reading Tommy Wrong six, uh, Dancing City is seven to one, Gidley Park eight to one. Shana Bob eight to one, and then you ten to one bar. And any fancies for yourself? Um, I would have a little bit of a fancy in Johnny Who. Um, there's six teams each way. Um, has ran I think four times so far this season. Ran really well in the Chalo Hurdle. I was actually there in the driving rain that day, which was very enjoyable. Um, when Captain Teague won, um, and I just thought the three miles of Chalo could suit it. Um, wasn't backed at all. I actually drifted in the market last time out. Uh, that was. I can't, can't remember what race that was off, off the top of my head, but um wasn't bad at all. It was out to 11 to 2 from around 4 to 1. That, that actually might have been the Lossy Mouth race. Well, I've just completely made that up. Um, so I would uh, fancy Johnny Hu for this. Yeah, Johnny Hu. Uh, Joe, come back to you. Uh, Alba Bartlett. Yeah, I put up um, High Class Hero anti post Lee, so I'm obviously still flying the flag, but I do think Reed and Tommy Wrong is going to go off a very short price on the day. Fair juice. Gav. Uh, yeah, same as Joe, put up high-class hero, anti so he's the, the main one for me. Um, just touching on what Flynn said there, I do quite like that form with Johnny Who and Captain Teague, um, and both of them are, are kind of had a crack at three miles here. Um, and I've always interested in Cobb to the last day, uh, when he basically, he was told by Nichols to get to the front, he then kind of said to him, you got that wrong, because he got to the front and he did jack shit. Um, so he said he'd want to hold on to him for, for longer. Um, so yeah, I think if he's more patiently ridden, he improves for the three miles. He's obviously the a kind of a grade one winner already. Um, Captain Teague, about 16 to one's interesting. And Johnny Who obviously tink, links it with the form as well. Um, so yeah, I think those two could be interesting outsiders for the English, but Mullins does look to have a strong hand. Yeah, I do want to quickly just mention, I do fancy uh, Lecky Watson each way in this. I think um, it's got graded form and I think Stepping up uh, back has won at two miles seven and will like conditions. So one for me each way is Lecky Watson, but I do like high class hero as well. Pete, what about you? Albert Bartlett. Same as both the other two lads, put up high class hero anti post. So flying the flag with that one. Um, but I also, <laughs> yeah, but on, on, on a different angle though, um, I like, I do like dance, I, I do like dancer city. 
Um, I think that's going to be an underrated horse in the fact that it reminds me of Mr. Nice Guy, just keeps winning. But I went all the way back and I looked at last year and I think it's easily forgotten. People forget that he was only six lengths off Ballyburn um, and he also beat Slade Steel in that same race. So yeah. that, that's that's strong form. And I think no one's going to see that. I only because I was going back to write up, do a write up for the horse. And when I started reading, I was like, hang on, this horse, those weren't flukes that he's done this year. So I know his debut was nothing special, but both times he was coming from miles back he, he, and he didn't look like he was finding anything. And then he just finds that gear and he's gone. And yeah, OK, maybe he was flattered a little. Maybe Predator's Gold didn't enjoy um, the uh, <coughs> trip. And obviously a, a sharper sharper uh, two mile four. But he still won at the end of the day. I don't overly rate the Jatara. Um, so the form is not that strong. But it's just something about him that I like the way he stays on. And I think, as Joe's mentioned, I think of those front three, High Class Hero, Reading Tommy Wrong, Dancing City, um, at least one of them is going to get a lot shorter and the rest are going to all move. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's one of the ones that goes the opposite way and he becomes double figures or on the exchanges, even goes further and further. But, but as far as the Albert Bartlett, the best piece of advice that no one's asked for is there's, there's no point having more than, say, one bet in this race until you've seen the Supreme and Ballymore. Because if certain horses win those races, it's going to be such strong form lines and you could end up backing two or three horses in a race and then you go and watch a horse that obviously, like say Predator's Gold won the Ballymore, suddenly Dancer's City's going off four to one or lower. So you may as well wait and obviously pick your battles. Yeah, fair dues. Stop messing about with that exchange. Just going back with Star Sports anyway. Don't be messing about. Yeah, with... yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I okay. can't bet on the exchange. Better get anyway, on the, yeah. the price boost as well. That will transition into the Gold Cup. Shishkin is now eight to one with um, Star Sports for a limited time only. Um, so try and take advantage of that price boost up to fifty pounds. Flynn, um, what's the market look looking like um, with Gallop and Deschamps ahead of the market for the Gold Cup? Yeah, Gallop and Deschamps levels you devils even money. Uh, Fast or uh, slow, four to one. Shishkin. It's 13 to 2 in the market for 8 to 1 on the boost. Jerry DeClon and uh, Jerry Colomb is 9 to 1. Hewitt 14s, Long Press 14, and you're 16 pound. Great, lads. I, I, I'm going to put this uh, question here. What's the 1, 2, 3 in the race? Uh, if you think Gallup and Deschamps will win, we don't have to explain it. We know how classy he is. Um, he, he's won his last two races, bolted up two runs back, and then beat fast or slow last time out. Give us a one, two, three. We'll try to sum it up in the best possible way. Flynn, I'll start with you. What, what do you fancy in the Gold Cup? Uh, what do I fancy, or what's my one, two, three? But both. What, what, what do you fancy to win it, and, and, and what's the one, two, three? Well, my my bet in the race would be Hewick, but my one, two, three Ooh. will probably be Gallop and Deschamps, Hewick, and fast or slow. Um, do you want to do the other one, two, threes first, or do you want the... No, uh, what, so do, do you think that Hewick is um, the each-way play in the race? Is that why you would have it like that? Yeah, if you just compare the run in the Gold Cup last year compared to the run in the King George, they were so different. Um, the run in the Gold Cup, he was trying to make all, expended a lot of energy early, and then kind of came down in like a tide fall, but ran a great race. Um, and then uh, at Kempton in the King George, he was out of the back, couldn't keep up, and then was staying on. And, and obviously went on to win the race. Um, and if he's just ridden a little bit more conservatively, I, I see him being like another My Will, um, kind of back in the day, or like a Mon Moan run yeah, yeah. in, in the uh, Gold Cup. And, and, and with a proper national title, we'll be staying on to fourth, third, maybe second. Um, and in this type of race, I just think he could definitely do that. But he just needs to keep, tab to keep tabs with the uh, leaders. And if he's there or thereabouts within kind of 10 lengths, kind of four out, um, then I think he'll just stay on into a place so I'd rather back him at 14s than Gallup and Sean Peters. Fair play. I did read that Jordan Gainford has been in the Sharks um, and, and, and been riding um, Hewick there. I think he'll take the ride and he's going to go in again and try and school him this week as well. Um, so good luck to the Shark there with Hewick. Uh, Gav, um, give us your, your, your fancy in, in a one, two, three, maybe. Yeah, so at the prices, I think Shishkin is is too big. Um, so he would be my fancy at seven to one. If someone's trying to have a, a eight to one with Star Sports, Gav, eight to one. Sorry, eight to one with Star Sports. Get on eight. To, there you go, look, eight to one. Um, so yeah, he would be the the one for me tonight. Um, to be honest, I'm going to go for a little bit of a, a quirky one, two, three. Obviously, the the first I think is Gallop in the Champ. Um, so I think that's fairly obvious. Um, the two and the three would be Shishkin and maybe Lahom Press for me. Um. I've just, as you know, there's something about fast or slow. Obviously, the, the ultimate form looks great. 
But then he's kind of mugged Gallopin twice when Gallopin wasn't quite right um, at the end of the season, at the start of the season. Um, I'm just not sold on him in a 5-1 to one shot for the Gold Cup. Um, there's a few others that are interesting. That the likes of um, Hewitt and Brave Man's Game, if it got drier, the, the likes of Jerry Colom, if it got softer. Um, but if it's just your kind of typical good to soft, soft, um, then yeah, it'd be Gallopin, Deschamps, Shishkin and La Home Press for me. Thank you, Gav. Um, Joel, come to you. Um, what's your winner in, in, in giveaway? One, two, three. Just, you know, the lads have got a few each three players there, which are, are strong at the prices. What, what do you like? I love Gallop and Deschamps to win. Lee, I always try and get them beat, but not only have we, they got a raise to last year's last year's um, level, they've got obviously raised to what he's actually done this season too. So I think there's a hell of a lot to find with him. I do think fast or slow will win a nice, uh, run a nice race. But I also think gentleman's game will be bang there at the finish this year. I think he's going to be the little bit of a wild card at near. I mean, what price can we get for gentleman's game, Flynn, at the moment? I'm interested in him as an unexposed type where we've sort of got a grasp of Shishkin and Hewick and what they're capable of at the moment. Is there, what's the value like there, Flynn? Yeah, uh, uh, gentleman's game is 16. Um, just also to mention that fast or slow, I think, is actually our worst result of the festival. Is he? Um, is so he's been really well. Su- sorry, he's been yeah. well supported. Is he fast or slow? Yeah, chunk- it's a chunky five-figure loser. Like fairly, wow. Fairly high, high uh, wow. five-figure slow. Uh, that's the big one anti-post. Uh, wow, us. that's surprising. Surprising. Wow. Well, so I am surprised it's him. Um, but don't worry, Flynn, because Gallopam will beat him anyway. So. Um, don't you don't you worry there, Flynn. But <laughs> gentlemen's game, I, I think is going to be cheering on an even money favourite in the Gold Cup. But I still won't do it. <laughs> I know yeah. it's, it is madness. Would would you be cheering him on? You know, like would you still be wanting him to win Gallop in the Champ if you've got like a liability against the likes of Fast or Slow? Would you? No, because Fast or Slow, even, even though it's a five figure liability, uh, that won't be the loser on the day. I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, I'd be very surprised if uh, Gallup has not the loser and across all kind of channels, whether it be in the shops or um, on course or online. So I would imagine that the favourite will be uh, the biggest loser at the off. So uh, I will yeah. still be not one in favourite to win as per every single race at Chelsea. You never know with them rolling Akas as well. Uh, them would be a <laughs> Um Pete, <laughs> what about you? Um, Gold Cup, I know you're a Gallup and Deshaun fan. You on big prices last season. Right? Have, have you got any nice... Tasty dockets and and do you fancy him going again? Yeah, I just put my bet straight on as soon as he won last year. He crossed the line, just went straight on bet, straight on job. Yeah, three to one. That was the best price that they gave. Um, yeah, I've been a fan all along. I I just my my only concern is obviously the obviously doing the treble. Um, but in in effect, I don't think the races are the same. They're not built the same way as they used to be when horses were trying to do this. Like that that DRF race, Joe's typing. That um, oh. that DRF race. It's like <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that that um, oh, that that DRF funny. that DRF race was like a schooling race for everyone. Conflated wanted it for the co- uh, cross country or Ryanair. Um, obviously, him and Fast or Slow both didn't want a hard run. They wanted it for the Gold Cup. So I don't think any of them. I know he's going to know he's had a race, but he's had a bit more time to freshen up. So for me, it'd be galloping first. I think Brave Man's game second. I'm still happy to row in with him. I wouldn't back him or I might have a saver, but it, I think you will see a better Brave Man's game than you've seen the rest of the season. Um, and in third, I'd split my ways. I'd go with Fast or Slow and Quiet Rambler from last year's Ultima. I think that I, I think it would be, um, that would be my one, two, three. And I'm really against Shishkin. Oh, really? Fair dues. Um, look, lads, um, we'll try and, you know, not keep people too long. Um, we'll get um, any other bets from Friday and then I'll go around the room. So just keep in mind that I want a nap of the full festival and we'll do maybe an each real lucky 15 from all the runners. So get any more bets from um, day four. Um, look, if you're, if you're on the back foot on day four, you're struggling already. But... <laughs> Um, any other bets? Gav, I want to start with you. Any other bets, handicap ones? We've got the Martin Payton and such like. 
Uh, yeah, so one race that interested me was the the Mayor's Chase. Um, so you've got the short price Dino Blue favourite in there. Um, Allegoy, the Fassi second favourite, who's quite short as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know what it is. I just can't warm to I just I just find her a bit of a pig. Uh, yeah. She's kind of very temperamental, isn't she? So I'd want to sort of take her on as well. Um, and the two that I would be keen on, and it very much, it's more of a wait until the time, um, is the, the Gavin Cromwell pair. So you've got Limerick Lace, if it goes softer, um, and Brides Hill, if it goes uh, drier. Um, and whichever way the conditions go, I'll be having a good each way bet on the, the respective horse, basically. Um, and yeah, I managed to put up Brides Hill Antipost as well. So again, it's kind of sat on that that docket, hoping that it comes up dry. Um, usually we tend to get the better ground, don't we, on the, the final day. Um, elsewhere for the, the handicaps um, and the, the fox hunters. So the, the county hurdle, um, again, I think a lot of these kind of standout horses are well found in the market. The so King of Kingsfield is an obvious one in there. Um, the yeah. one that I thought was quite interesting was Absurd. Um, so they kind of put him in a couple of hurdles over the summer. Um, and then they've checked him in a couple of nice hurdles in the winter. And that's got him the full run. So I was looking and I was like, oh, I think he's in the other couple of runs. He won't be eligible for the race. But he's had all four. And he just smells to me like the kind of the state man of this year. Yeah. Um, if it come up decent ground, if there was a good pace to aim at and he could get his jumping in a rhythm... Um, he just strikes me as just far too classy for a county hurdle. Um, so, yeah, I think he could be this kind of year's state man. Um, the Fox Hunters doesn't really interest me. For me, it's between um, it's on the line of Ferns Lock, as the, the market suggests. Um, the worry for Ferns Lock is he's kind of a different breed um, to what the trainers had before. He just seems to have a bit more of a turn of, of, turn of foot. Um, and the worry is that in that trip coming up that Cheltenham Hill, um, I'm just not sure he's going to stay. So I know Joe's going to like this, but I think it's on the line. Um, we're just going to power him past him. Um, and I'm just struggling to, to see past that one. Um, in the Martin Pipe, one that I do like the look of. Um, and again, it's kind of reliant on the, the ground coming up better on the, the Friday. So it's, we're all praying for, for sunshine on the Friday. Um, is in Canto Bruno in the Martin Pipe. Um, so he came, I think it was at the October meeting, wasn't it? And he won. Um, and he won impressively as well. Um, and he's been chucked into a couple of horrible races on like heavy ground, stuff that's just not going to suit him at all. Um, and then he's obviously coming back. I, well, it looks like it for the Martin Pipe. Um, he's about 20 to 1. Um, and I just think that just smells a bit of a, a plot for me that they, they've kind of given that kind of dress rehearsal in October. They've given him a couple of stinking races to get his mark down. Um, and then he'd be fully tuned up and ready to go in that in that Martin Pipe. Um, so, yeah, they would be the, the ones for me for the rest of Friday. Thank you, Gav. Um, Pete, I'll come to you. What, what, what do you like? Any, anything else on that Friday? Uh, yeah, as Gav, men as Gav mentioned, in the in the county between Mullins and Skelton, they've won eight of the last nine, four apiece. And I just think that's that's the way you want to be looking. I thought absurd was really interesting as well. It seems to be quite under the radar, and the fact that there's, everyone's looked at quite a few of the you know the Sam Jests and the sexy ones of Mullins, but he seems to not really be mentioned. It does concern me that Mullins said that. Depending on the ground, he could run in the Supreme, he could run in the County, or he might not run at all. But I think with the mark he got, I just think you look at his form, obviously everyone's latched on to King of Kingsfield. Um, and you look at the way they stayed on, you look at the way they stayed on last time out. And um, <laughs> Sorry, you, sorry, lads, sorry. <laughs> you must be getting them price boosts at Star Sports. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm entertaining yeah. the comment section, lads. Oh, OK. Yeah, because, he doesn't know how to mute himself. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, right. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just think the way he stayed on, he was ahead of King of Kingsfield <laughs> until it came to the end, and it was like. So I don't think there'll be much between him, and I think a big race would suit. But I do really like one in that race as well, and that's uh, by Ali Stock, if I've said that right. Yeah, yeah. Same yard, same yard. William Mullins, Paul Town, and um, look back at like some of his form last year. And he was actually gelded, so they really mustn't have liked him because it's rare for you to see horses on the national hunt scene um, gelded. But after that, he ran a better race, and then he bolted up at Punchestown, and he won the equivalent, the old on the schnaff job. Then he, he ran well in the Galway Hurdle behind uh, Zarek the Brave, yeah. um, had a bit of a break. And the, but the run that caught my eye was again. This is obviously we're all looking for that state man sort of angle, the way he campaigns him, and he campaigned him aggressively by first time out coming in the Royal Bond after two months off he ran he was only six to one for that race and he was held up out the back he came wide he was under danny mullins which i think will probably be the jockey again because he's um because he's not an easy ride so he came wide he was staying on and obviously he didn't get to the he didn't get to the front but it was one of those promising runs without winning at the drf for the punchtown hurdle it was kind of one of those where's this come from he went from 20 to one into yeah into five to one and then he ended up going off. I think he was as short as nine to two. He went off about thirteen to two, 
and he was two out. He was there on the snap against the rail. And it, it literally, as he went to make his move, he got brought down and that was it, race over. And I just thought, as soon as the marks came out, he was six. He was 16, I think, first price. Um, the marks come out and I looked across and his mark hadn't changed. I thought the, the DRF um, handicaps are really strong. And I'd say they're probably about four or five pounds below the Cheltenham handicaps. But you've got no idea how much he's got in, left in him. And I just thought there's a lot of horses. Everyone's going to be looking at Willie Munzoff. But I just thought this one's a little bit more under the radar. And yeah, I really fancy him for county. Um, regards anything else, Mare's Chase, Dino Blue for me. I know, obviously, there's not a lot between him. I just think she's got the class edge. Boring, I know. And I think the one-two from the Fox Hunters are going to take the beating again. It's on the line. Outstay Ferns Lock um, because Ferns Lock just doesn't seem to stay. Once maybe two two miles, whatever it is, seven furlongs. I, I think it needs a short trip. Probably will win at Aintree. Whereas I think it's on the line is tailor made for that. The, I I put to Joe the other day. T- it's on the line is the new bill away. It'll be staying on when everyone else is beaten. Yeah. Uh, look, lads. Um, stick with us if you you're watching. We're going to wrap up now because we're going to get the best bets from everybody. I want the nap. And I don't want no explanation. We're just going to have an each way look at 15, um, some tasty prices, any races, any handicaps across any days. We'll go around the room. Pete, I'll come back to you. So what's the nap of the festival? It doesn't have to be the price, but any each way lucky 15 from you. Okay, so if we're, if we're saying nap short price, then I think Ballyburn will, will win. Likely, Fair. it's looking like the Supreme. And I do think Ballyburn will win the Supreme. Um, bigger price. Uh, by Ali, by Ali Stock for the county. I don't know what price have we got there, Flynn, for the county. And I've just caught you on the spot. I'll keep <laughs> talking. But um, so if we're going for a lucky fifteen, I'll put both of those two in it. Um, for the Ryanair, I'll go Stage Star. And for the, do we want a bigger price? We'll go, go for the Coral Cup. We'll go for um, No Ordinary Joe. No ordinary Joe, which links me to Ginger Joe. We've we've actually been asked a question to what Go we on. think about the ride of No Ordinary Joe. So Pete, what did you think? Because I noticed Brogan was on board, and then they well, said, yeah, that's well, it, exactly. Go. I thought. Well, I I thought it was brilliant for for, for next week. Right he literally he got the got the horse. It was everyone was making jokes about it. They were like, "Well, who's who's got the bullet where they've got to go and, go and try and make it look as <laughs> least obvious as possible that they're choking the horse." I Literally. thought it was perfect because, like, all this talk about Henderson's stable form, and I was thinking, well, I know I haven't got that concern because I saw him run during this recently. Mm. So I know he's – and he could not be fitter. He couldn't be more ready. Like, that form, I think if he just said, just let go, he would have still won that race the other day. So I'd have no concerns with anything. I think it was perfect here. I mean, that's what you call well campaigned. But at least he tried. Like, Langer Dan literally doesn't try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So at least he's ran, he's ran on his merit. He's just – um. It's like, know, I'd, expect you, I'd expect you to see better. It's like when you uh, used to say to Davy Russell, get them in the patemps. Get them qualified. <laughs> yeah. <in> the patemps. <laughs> it's when they're all in the line looking across. What position are you, mate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, Joe, Joe, you're no ordinary, Joe. What do you fancy? What's your each way lucky 15? And what's the best bet of the week? Well, I've just been laughing because I've been getting texts off a couple of the Chartnam Exchange lads telling me, don't you dare nap Marine because he's a pig. <laughs> my nap of the fair is Marine National um, and he's my Stick number one he's the number one in the lucky 15 as well Lee I've got two shorties oh. and two bigger prices so I've got Marine right. National in the Arkle I've got Jade the Grugy in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle and then the two bigger prices I've got I've got You Ought to Know in the Bumper of course I've been shouting from the rooftops what I think of this fella and then I've got Madara in the Grand Annual now this is only a five year old with nine chase starts Came and won at Cheltenham on the new course, then went and bolted up at the DRF when James Reevely came over from France for the one ride. I'm still convinced that this one's got plenty in hand. So that's Marine Nationale, Madara, You Ought to Know, and Jade DeGrugy. If you want a decent bet as a single, great cool in the per temps. A cracking six year old mare for Ted Walsh. I like that, Joe. I like it. Uh, Gav, mm-hmm. what about you? Give them punt as some, uh, you know, a, a good lucky 15 that they can go home in the riches. Yeah, so for me, the, the nap is a very unsexy Al Fabiolo, a, a silly price, just because I can't see him beat. Um, yeah. And then for the, the each way lucky 15, we get a little sexier. Um, so I'm going for Love Envoy in the Mayor's Hurdle at 16 to 1, yes, Cargis at 8 to 1 in the Triumph, Absurd at 12 to 1 in the County Hurdle, 
Ooh, and Encanto right. Bruno at 20 to 1 in the Martin Pike. You could retire oh. off that, Gov. Yeah, <laughs> big, big races there. And, and, and Flynn, what about you? Uh, what's the best bet of the um, the whole week? And give us an each real lucky 15, what you fancy personally. Yeah, uh, so best bet of the week uh, in terms of nap would be NYLM uh, for the Ryanair. Then each way lucky 15 will go back to my beloved Hunter Gian in the article. Uh, side of Burley for the players. Good time, Johnny, for the QBR at Hewitt for the World Cup. Um, should we do charity bets as well, Lee? Do you want to speak yes, that so while we're there? Yeah, um, Star Sport and Flynn have occasionally given us uh, £50 each. Is that right, Flynn? Uh, that's it. And last year, I think Pete actually backed Korak Rambler. Yeah. <laughs> Cost you a few quid yeah. then, Flynn. But it was, the Korak. He went to a good course. He went yeah, to a good course. Absolutely. absolutely. Castle, which are a very good course in Oswald Hospice. Uh, we each get to pick a pick a charity bet, fifty pound. And uh, Star Sports is kindly going to donate the the winnings there um, to any charity of our choice, which is uh, very kind, Flynn. So thank you very much. And we'll go around the room, Flynn. Do, are you want to start, or do, are you getting a charity bet too? Uh, I will have it on. Uh, I'll have it on Hewitt because the boys have been rin rinsing me in the chat. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want Hewitt to win. <laughs> what price yeah. What price is he, Flynn, and, and what charity is it? Uh, 14, and we'll go for the IJF. Very nice. Uh, Gav, kindly um, Star Sports giving us this charity bet. Uh, what's the charity and, and what's the bet going to be for you? £50, pound, where are you going to go? Yeah, so I'm going to go for St. Michael's Hospice in Hereford as the, the charity, so just a, a local hospice charity to myself. Um, and then in terms of the bet, I'm looking at Broadway Boy each, £25 each way in the National Hunt Chase. Um, so I'm not too sure what price Star Sports have him, um, but I'll have my 25 each way on him. Flynn, if you, if you can get these prices for her, um, what, what can you give her for that one? Uh, if we take the bets, I'll, I'll write them all down. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. Well, I'll get the rest yeah. of the bets and then uh, we can get the prices there. Uh, Joe... Um, what's your charity going to be and, and what's the bet? I always just go with the Injured Jockeys Fund. Uh, Lee, I'm quite more than happy to support the cause with uh, with the way the racing is in today's yeah. day and age. Um, but my, my charity bet, please, will be on Great Call in the Per Temps. You should get a decent enough price for her. It'd be a nice bit of cash for a decent charity. So hopefully Great Call, the nice six-year-old mare for Ted Walsh, can pick up the pieces for us. Lovely, Joe. Thank you very much. And Pete, what's the charity and what's the bet? £50, where's it going? Charity, we're going back to the well again, back to St Oswald's Hospice, Newcastle. Hopefully we'll be making the phone call again. Um, and that's going on the nose, £50 on the nose by Ali Stock, County Hurdle. Well, Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Finn's, Finn's chopping the price before he even says yeah. <laughs> yeah, so back, five five to one. I've backed Bal Bialystock myself, actually. I re I really do think got a huge chance there, travelling really well the last day. Uh Flynn, do I get a, a bet to put on as well? Uh yeah, as you're the MC for the night, you can have a <laughs> go on then, right. So I will look, I'm gonna keep it simple. I think bright ideas ahead will win. Can I double it up with uh El Fabiolo, do a double, maybe. You can have a double, so 50 quid, brighter days ahead, and El Fabiolo. Yes, look, keep it simple. For me. I was going to go a bit bigger, but we'll, 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 we'll try and keep it simple. Eve, Eve, Eve of money, the double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> give, give, give us a 20s pin. pin no, I'm Lee. Really Lee, are you all right if I just mention one thing? We had um, we had a comment asking about Mr. Meggett, and I said I'd message John Joe. All I've asked him, I said, fantastic to see Mr. Yeah. Meggett win so well today. Uh, will he go to Cheltenham or is it a little bit too soon? And if so, will Bill Joyce be your bumper horse? He wrote, thanks, Joe. Too soon to tell for Ivan, to be honest. Yeah, but we'd be happy with either race. So no idea. Sorry about that. But <laughs> he replied. <laughs> there you go. Um, just before I pass. He's a good contact, Joe. I'll pass back Couldn't you. help. Couldn't, no, no answer. Um, just just maybe go over. Um, uh, that that them price boosts are they still available? Thing can people still get on um the the, the treble there? Yep. So they'll be on site, and I've asked the guys to leave them up for half an hour past the preview, and that's for the sign up offer as well. And um, so sign up offer and the boost will be up. If I could just do a quick plug for just some bits we've got okay. going on during the if that's okay. 
Um, we're actually best odds guaranteed now on uh, all horse racing, UK and Irish. Um, so a lot of firms are moving away from Brock, but we're actually now giving out best odds guaranteed. So if you have any bad challenge, on them, you will get best odds guaranteed uh, on those. Um, and we're all in the running. Clint, what what yeah. time's that? What time's that from? Sorry, in the morning. What time's that? Does it start? I believe sorry. it's ten a.m. <laughs> I'll double check. Okay, Sam. Um, yeah. And then we've uh, we've also got offers on each day, so we'll pick five races from each day, um, and it'll be a mix of money back seconds, uh, extra place races, and then we also run another uh, another offer called All Over the Place, which is basically if you have an each way bet and your horse uh, doesn't finish the course, then you'll get the each way part back to free bet. So uh, you've got some fun, funky offers to get stuck into, and best us guaranteed there as well. It's, it sounds like me actually all over the place to be honest Flynn um, but <laughs> it's a good name I, I do like it there's plenty of good concessions over there at a star sports and like you say best odds guarantee a lot of firms are moving away from that that's a good concession to have try and take advantage of them price boost that Flynn has been given throughout the night um, there's plenty of good ones and that treble looks tasty as well and that sign up of our preview 25 as well um, Flynn I I'll thank you from, from all of us lads um, for having us on and, and linking up with Star Sports um, thank you for the price boost I hope uh, people can take advantage of them and get some winnings and, and especially thank you for the charity bet last year you donated that um, you know good amount of money to the to the hospice there that uh pete had the winner with so thank you uh for you and the team at star sports um gav i'm gonna thank you as well thanks for coming on go and follow racing gav and ginger joe at the racing uh ginger joe channel um but pete i'll pass back to you to to wrap things up but um thanks for me and the lads as well good man lee good man lee yeah cheers lee yeah thank you very much thank you for everyone for uh tonight uh, Lee, thank you very much for hosting. I know it's obviously my channel, but you are the host. You are the man with this. So uh, I really appreciate you doing all this for us. Um, Flynn, thank you very much for coming on. And boys, thank you very much. Good luck to everyone watching. Good luck for next week. And I hope everyone takes, well, apart from you, Flynn, I hope everyone takes all the money from all the bookies. I hope you absolutely clean them dry. And if you're there and you see any of our faces, obviously Flynn, Gav, we're all going to be there at some point next week. Well, not next week, the week after. So look forward to seeing you. Just walk up, say hello. We're all pretty approachable. So good luck whatever you're betting. And thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks, lads. Cheers, guys. Take care. Thank you. Cheers.